If you want to join in on the fun, just scan the QR code to subscribe to our newsletter and connect with over a half million folks on a mission to get healthy. On this episode, we're going to share easy hacks to help you simplify your daily routine, tips to eat healthy, and let's not forget the workouts, including some dance moves to help ring in the new year. This is Start Today. Let's kick things off with our fitness leader, Stephanie Mansoor, and this month's aerobic challenge. So, we love a good throw, uh, like a little flashback Friday here, Steph. Yes, and we're right. talking aerobics, but this is something you did in college. Actually, it is. So, you know, I grew up playing oh. sports, and when I got to college, I stopped this. playing sports. I had to find something fun that would get me moving in college. Like many people, I gained the freshman 15, but then 20, 25 pounds was really unhappy with how I looked, how I felt. So, I started dancing around in my dorm room. And then I started an aerobics TV Wait, show at University of Michigan. Oh, look at that. So you've been doing this yeah. for a minute. Wow, look at those moves. <laughs> hey, now. Back it Almost up. Almost 20 years ago there, guys. Oh, yeah. We, we joke, but aerobics and these little movements, they're fun to do, and it's a great workout. Yeah, absolutely. And especially now, people are busy. They're stressed. Mm -hmm. Look at your workout as a fun time okay. where you can entertain yourself. Just dance around to the beat, and you'll burn calories and feel better mentally, too. Oh, What's our that. first move? Yeah, let's, and let's bring you in here, too, because Jessica, she is um, Jessica Miller, she's in Connecticut. All three of her kids are adults now, out of the house. And you have say you found community with the Start Today team. I did, I did. And I'm so glad that she changes up the workout. Steph changes up the workout each month, and I'm excited and wanted to ask a question about how to get aerobic activity into the workout. Yeah, you know, this is something everyone can do at home here. We're gonna start with a simple march in place, okay? So pumping those arms, marching to the beat, and then, oops. Am I losing no, something? I'm, I'm, I know. Losing, I'm losing jewels. <laughs> Yikes. I can't even pick that up. <laughs> All right, so we're marching here, and then what we're going to do is a side step. So we're going to do side step. Side, step, side, step. Yes, I know. Okay. Ideally, you'd want to wear those tennis shoes, but this little basic movement, you can do barefoot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> On the carpeting, it's fine because you won't slip. Just be careful here. Okay. All right, so we got this side step. Now we're right. going to do a skater. So we're tapping the foot backwards and reaching the arm forwards. Nice. Doesn't this feel good? And the thing is, you really don't need a lot of space. Exactly. Like, home. Yes, I used okay. to do this in my dorm room in college. And the last <laughs> move here is we're going to work the arms here, work the abs. Woo, like a dance. Hey now. Al, this looks dancing. great. Way to go, Al. You should be dancing. Yeah. Woo. Should be. Oh, and then we have to pay for that. Sorry. Uh. And then go ahead and just march in place. All right. All right. Yep. That, is fun. that was good. All right. So, yeah. uh, okay. Daniel Kalaji, what's your what's your question? Yeah. So I just joined the NBC family, and it's Welcome. been thank you, thank you, and it's been the best few months, but the busiest few months. Well, now as we get know. ready. So, <laughs> Stephanie, what small aerobic routines can I implement into my daily schedule to feel mentally happy and healthy, especially in December, yes. the winter months? It's getting colder outside and darker earlier. I know motivation can be waning. So if you're at home right now, or if you're at the office, I want you to do some heel taps. So we just stand in place, tap one heel, and we're actually going at a very high beats per minute here, guys. We've got, yeah, we're going too yes, fast. we're going pretty fast. So <laughs> when you go to today.com slash start today, you're going to get the two workout videos. I've got a slower paced version and a higher paced version. Both are low impact. <laughs> we're going to add the arms. <laughs> we're going to add the arms here. Want to get a little yes. extra everything. <laughs> Get that heart rate elevated. And then our last move I want to show you guys is something really fun, okay. the pony. So oh, we're going to go pony. side to side, side to side. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Nice. One, two, three. Now we add the arms and up. Oh, it is. Nice. Yes. Awesome. Stop. And then we keep going. And this is so much fun. Just play your favorite song. Do we have a different idea of fun? <laughs> Oh my gosh. And this will keep you moving all month long. Up next, Allie Love is back with some easy hacks to streamline and simplify our lives. Plus, she's going to share her favorite tips and products to help us prepare for that busy travel season. We'll be right back.
glad we're back. These days, we all got busy schedules, and it can feel like there's an endless list of things to do. But today, contributor Ali Love has just what we need to simplify our daily routines. Ali, these are things that are doable little things, because sometimes little big things. steps aren't easy. Yes, I'm passionate about the economy of energy. Okay. Meaning, if we do some habits and put them into our everyday life, what ends up happening, we have time to do the things we love. Okay. First up, how many times have you carried loads of shoes? We have a comfortable shoe, and then we have a presentation shoe, a heel and a flat. Right, we have a well, flat to walk around the city Exactly, in so what we want to do is we want to remove the fact of carrying multiple shoes and replace it with one. We have passion footwear. We have our model, Julie, here. It's going to show us how it goes. Julie? Julia. What, uh, what, Julia. Julia. So yes. wait, what, what's so happening with you these? have a heel, and basically it turns into a flat. You click no, it, you and it comes not. off. Yes. Wait. So now she has a heel, and this is about to turn. She's taking it off, and it's going to go ahead, take it off, take it off. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it's going to turn into a flat. Look at that. So in, instead of carrying multiple shoes around, you're going to go ahead and have one shoe that does multiple things. That's what we want to do. We want to remove the carrying of multiple shoes and replace it oh, God, that, with just right, one that's shoe. Good. Look at that. That's a great, I will say, passion footwear, that is a great design. Julia, great job. Yes, okay, so it. ordering right. out is something that we do because we feel like it saves us time, yes. and you're like, the food is fine, but yes. what do you say? Especially when it comes to lunch. Mm -hmm. Most of us spend a lot of time yeah. in the middle of the day figuring yeah. out, what do I want to eat? Yeah. Sometimes we kind of like, choose the unhealthy mm -hmm. option. Here, what we want to do is a stitch in time saves nine. Okay. We want to go ahead and prep our meals. Okay. We want to prep our lunch. We have some fajitas here, protein and vegetables. Yummy. And we pre prep these because they're healthy. Mm -hmm. We know we love them. We know we love them. And guess what? You get more time back in lunch to actually just relax and take a beat for yourself. Okay, That's I like that. You, right? Yeah, so you got a healthy meal and you saves time. Yes. <clears throat> All right, Hoda, now this one, some of you folks don't turn off just yet, mm -hmm. okay? They, we're going to talk about stairs. We're going to remove the stairs. I know I might have lost some yeah. of you, but hear me out. Okay. We're, we're, remo thing. we're removing the elevators, actually. We're removing the elevators, and we are going to replace them with stairs. Now, the reason for that is you're getting an everyday yep. workout, yep. and more importantly, you can have rules that work for you. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're going anywhere between the bottom and the fifth floor, maybe you use the stairs. Okay? Maybe it's the third floor. Maybe it's mm -hmm. the first floor. But you figure out what works for you. This is a healthy option. Remove the elevator. Replace with stairs. Once in a while. Gabby Giffords, who was the senator from Arizona, the congresswoman from Arizona who was shot, was here. And she has trouble with motor skills. Mm -hmm. And we asked, do you want the elevator? And you know what she said? Always the, the stairs. stairs. She yes. walked up and we thought, if she's doing it, we're doing it. We can do it. it. Exactly. All right. Let's get rid of self-talk and let's love ourselves. You, you love this. Yeah. I love this. We are removing negativity. Okay. We are replacing it with positivity. How do we do that? Mm -hmm. Well, we're making sure that our post-it notes, we talk about this all the mm -hmm. time, whether they're at our locker, on our desk, or in front on of us. On your Instagram. On your you Instagram. Have good ones. I have a ton yes. of them to remind you of who you are, how great you are, how well you're doing. Yes. You can put it as a screensaver on your phone so when you use your phone as often as you do, you're seeing those positive words. And then, of course, our girlfriend group. We can make sure that we have a group just to send positive information. Love so it. remove the negativity, right. replace it with positivity. So our hair. We know that heat and hair go together, but you say yes. no. I say no. Remove the compound effect of heat on our hair. For many of us that use a flat iron or the curling iron, what we want to do is replace them with these heatless curling sets. So you can go to sleep in them. You can put Wait. them in your hair. Yeah, Four. they're comfortable. You see this on TikTok, on Instagram. Okay. You put them so in your you hair put it in, you wake up, and they're and soft. You. you look great. And you're, there Imagine you are. Imagine going to bed and waking up with a new do, honey. <laughs> She's so, doing it. All right, it just takes the stress off your hair, which is exactly. one less thing that yeah. you have to worry about. Hair is a part of your body. You want it to be healthy. I've been waiting Lastly, for this one. give it to me. What are right we talking away, about? Okay? I am guilty of this one. We need to remove the fact that we don't eat breakfast anymore. We right. need to replace it with eating breakfast. And the way to do that is to adopt it to our busy schedule, okay. making sure that you cook in advance, similar to the fajitas. You cook it in advance, you pack it in the fridge, and then you go ahead and grab it out, cut it in squares. You feed your family, your friends. You can put it in your bag. You can eat it hot, snack. cold. This is an egg casserole, and we should dig in. So all of these simple habits, the economy of energy mm. and time, mm. they're healthy, and they make you a better mm. person. And with the holidays coming up, so many of us are gearing up for the busy travel season. That doesn't mean, though, your health has to take a back seat. Allie also stopped by Hoda and Jenna to share her favorite tips to make traveling a breeze. 
so okay. you like you're a strategy person. I am a strategy. She lays person. it out. I like to fit a lot of things in a very small area, okay. just like most people. Okay. So the first thing I recognize is that bag with zippers, like as my personal carry-on, is not my jam. Okay. okay. The reason for that, I don't know if you have like a cup of tea or you have things in your hand, and all of a sudden you get to the gate and they're like, "Can I see your passport?" Oh. And you're like, and you're like, "I need I to get in it." Get so in this her. bag stands up. You need a bag yep. that stands up. That's has by the way, so cute. Yes. Cute. Opens up and everything's inside. And what okay. I do, because this could be a jungle, right? In all honesty, mm -hmm. is I put things in pouches. I color code my pouches. Wait, color so, code? Yes. So I have Ollie. one pouch. I know. What's the I know. Yeah. Like I have one pouch for like medicine. So I'm like, all my medicines in here. It's in the bag. Right. Electronics. We're talking about. We were talking right. about headphones just yeah. now. Everything from phone chargers, headphones are in yeah. one bag. Yeah. Another Makeup. thing, my snacks, snacks and then all my skincare yeah. goes in there. So I just pull out a zip, Wait. open it up. She really mm. needs to help us see, badly. It's, you should see Hoda's bag. Open it up a zip bag. And mine, for that matter. I'm yeah. not gonna throw stones. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> now let's Good, talk. Let's talk snacks. One thing you do, which which sort of surprised me, is you do not eat a big meal before you fly. I do not. I don't know Why? how I'm going to feel. I don't yeah. know if you get a little bloated, a little gassy sometimes on flights yeah. or long trains. Or you don't feel well. You just, just don't yeah. feel well. So, so and also, I like you're going to be sitting for a very long time. So if you're going to be sitting, you're not moving, you don't really need the nutrients, no. right? So what I do is one of those little pouches, like I'm a pouch queen, I have all my snacks. I love bone broth. You add hot water. You, hot are, water. you are having bone broth on the plane? I am, honey. It's fabulous. Girl, you're you one of those people. You're one of those people. I'm Let like, me can smell. I get a couple so of water, please? Smells like gravy. This is great to de-bloat. I will. It tastes really? good. Wait, I, I love it. Hold on. It. I'm going to be drinking Wait, this on the way. Yes, Look. they're little pouches that go in your snack Our pouch over there. Mix. Hot and you water just put hot everywhere. Water and this yes, is how it tastes. It. Take it. a water bottle. You put your Wait, hot water. We should be or having mug. bone broth. We're Lots way behind the time. Ingredients. Little hacks that change your life. Okay, I love next. this. Okay. Oatmeal as well. I love pretzels. Oh, oatmeal. You just ask for water again. Yes, hot water. It's free if you're traveling on a train on in a car. Okay. One of my favorite are. I'm going to pull these off. What are those? These are smart press. Little pack. This is just a perfect pack. It? Beetroot extra energy. You don't need a lot of caffeine. Wait, you, what do you do with this? You tea? just add water. You just no beetroot juice. Oh, it's juice. It's just oh, a green juice. Green juice. juice. All of your vitamins, vitamins, all the good things. A little pineapple chia Wait. cleanse helps with debloating. So oh, you thank just you. put and this then, in your water bottle. Uh huh. And then it protein. Up. That's it. When you need to be satiated. Exactly. It's a perfect pack. It's How do they you also like really these? Good. They taste this, good. Honestly, she said. this is one of my favorite things on the planet. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk hydration. Wait, what about what about this? She said she liked. Pretzels. Oh, I can, and these are great for like if someone's on the plane. Yeah, like and they're hungry, you can share. You're like, hey, yeah, let's okay, share. okay. Hydration. Okay. Yeah. I um station. I go to the bathroom a lot of times yeah. throughout the plane. Hydration <laughs> station. That's what she always says on the Peloton. Right. We know. <gasps> I got it. Uh-huh. Okay. You nailed it. Hydration uh -huh. station. I drink uh -huh. water all day. Like yeah. on the plane, yeah. on but the car. You get okay. dehydrated on plane. So you so need yes. more water than usual. And okay. Not only dehydrated on the inside, but on the outside. Okay, so what do I was do? on TikTok and I saw this girl. She did like a 12-step program for your skin, and I was like, who has the time to do that? Nobody. Right. I will be honest. I am the person who will go to sleep with her makeup on. Don't judge me. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I will. I, I know I knew you I were gonna say I don't no. picture. No, I said, oh, I, I don't judge you because oh, look at your guys. beautiful skin. Thank you. Okay, Thank so you. what do you take? So what I do these? is I have, these are face mm -hmm. wipes. Great to wipe mm -hmm. your face. Mm -hmm. I love this. I love an aquaphor right aquaphor. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lips, Lips. For nose, chap mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. I always bring these things. A face spray. This is great. Hydration face spray, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Hydration mm -hmm. station. I love eye spray. mask. Mm -hmm. So instead of 12 steps on my own time, sometimes I'll do four steps. And then okay. the last thing are my essentials. Socks. I do not like putting my own socks on the floor of a plane or a train. So I cover them with travel socks. Headphones. I always carry hot sauce in my bag, swag, like Beyonce. So oh my God, you are hilarious. Yes. hilarious. My husband loves strawberry jam. And then my favorite thing <laughs> is, if you've ever been on a traveling in public and you fall asleep sitting up and you're like this, yeah. and no one, I always travel with a little handkerchief and I go like this. So Just, I can, so I can open can my mouth, mouth open if you want. But nobody cares. <laughs> I they know. Would love, yes, but you're, these are all brilliant. See, Allie, brilliant. Allie. I'm gonna start having bone broth. Yeah. Okay. I thank love that you, you always take you. my drinks. I, I, I love That's your so ideas. That's so good. It's good. It's so good. good. Just ahead, clear out some space in your living room because we're gonna get moving with two start today workouts. But first, ever wonder how you can make your favorite foods healthy? Joy Bauer will reveal her best tips right after this.
Welcome back. Eating healthy isn't always easy, but here at Start Today, it's all about taking little baby steps. Here's today nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer with some simple ways to add a healthy spin to your favorite meals. So we're starting with the cozy, comforting yes. oh, yeah. stack oh, of pancakes. Oh, mandatory in my house every love weekend. It. But when you put a lot of butter and syrup on top, it's going to zap your energy and it's going to leave you feeling super lethargic. Really? The easiest way to upgrade your stack is by swapping your topping. And so, mm. I am Voila. showing ah. you. So the That's same fair. stack of pancakes with lots of colorful berries. So first the berries add Looks antioxidants and fiber. Right. Do you skip the syrup? It, it gives it, yes, because what we put here is an aerated mm. squirt of whipped cream. So mm -hmm. the cool part about that is it ups the fun factor. It's mm -hmm. like no calories. Right, because it infuses a lot of air within those canisters, and so you could have a generous squirt. And I'm telling you, every single bite is a delicious it really treat. Is. I'm okay. Sure. So there's not like a That's compromise a there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was breakfast. Is this lunch? This is lunch. So I'm showing the classic chicken wrap rolled in a tortilla. I do like a wrap. Instead, we have a chicken wrap rolled in lettuce Voila. leaves. Mm. And here's why this is a good one. So many people are looking to cut back on their <laughs> hey, carbs. That's not the right one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the wrap to go to waste. <laughs> That's good. Around. We don't like food waste here. But a lot of people are looking to cut back wraps. on their carbs and lower their blood sugar. And this is one of mm -hmm. the most seamless and effective trips, tricks you could do. And really, when you think about it, it's so the good. yummy filling that, say, that is the star of the wave. show. Yeah, and if you yes. get a crisp, yummy piece of lettuce around it, yeah. it's yummy. Yeah, the right lettuce so I use either apart. romaine um, lettuce leaves, like <laughs> when you buy the packages of the hearts, and also you can use butter lettuce, mm -hmm. or you can use iceberg. It's almost like those, yes, those great big leaves are meant for wrapping sandwiches and burgers. Okay, so I can't wait for this one. Okay, so this is the beloved chocolate fudge cake. And I was kind of ballsy to take this one on, <laughs> but I tried my best to come up with a gooey, fudgy, mouth-watering counterpart. Okay. And I am I'm presenting try this. my two ingredient two. chocolate fudge cakes. So there's two ingredients. There's no, no oil, there's no butter, and you don't need to use the oven. No okay. oil, no butter, no oven. No. What are so, the two ingredients? So it is apple melted, sauce and water. No, oh, no, no. Melted chocolate this chips like and fudge. canned pumpkin puree. That's it. Joy, this actually is, this is, this is, this pretty, tastes this like is pretty fun. good. It's good. Oh, I'm so happy. I was excited for that you was to really try this. skeptical wow. too. Wow. And, and what I love about them, they're perfect portion control treats that you can stash in your fridge. And when you're craving something super mm. rich and chocolatey and indulgent mm. without but going even overboard, a third of this is rich enough. That enough. That gives you that. Tastes like. It's this pumpkin puree and what else? Pumpkin puree and melted chocolate chips. That's so it. I used a dark chocolate chips, but you can use semi sweet. Oh my gosh, that's and delicious. of course, we're putting this on today.com. This is delicious. And everybody so can get the recipe. Realistically, like calorie, what are we still? So we're saving in all sorts of stuff, right? Fat, calories, all of it. Tons of sugar, tons of saturated fat, and tons of calories. Okay. Um, super and it, rich. it really satisfies that craving. Yeah. I was and really it, skeptical about that. I thought you should have saved you liked it. I do. I do. <laughs> all right, now a little snack. Okay. I feel like you should have saved that for your finale, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll go back and eat that <laughs> afterwards. So this is all about the chips and salsa. Yeah. And full disclosure here, I love chips. And I joke around saying that one chip is a thousand chips because I yeah. can't stop. Yes. So I'm always looking for healthier counterparts. And we know that carrots and bell pepper sticks, mm. those are oh. obvious. What These are the underdogs. Mm. So it's jicama mm. and I'm it's sorry, also sugar snap peas. And this is why they're try so the great. I'm good. No, just he, try he it. Likes the fun, oh, the, the, the wrap of the fudge. Oh, honestly, I'm, I'm, this it's is really good. Super joy. snappy. It has a satisfying crunch, great flavor. They're in season right now. Mm -hmm. And it comes with tons of nutrition. I'm ashamed. I don't even know what it looks like from the outside to buy it. It's like a potato it, looking thing, right? It's sort of if a potato and an apple had a baby, yeah. you would get a jicama. But it's a very low calorie root yeah. veggies that's rich in that's potassium. Great. You don't have to cook it first. It's no, good. you don't cook it. You peel the outside skin Why you and you cut it into <laughs> sticks and then you dunk away really in whatever you want. Okay. Now that we're all fueled up, let's get moving. Coming up, we've got some easy exercises you can do right at home to stay in shape all winter long. And a dance workout you don't want to miss. We'll be right back.
We're back and leveling up our winter workout routines. Fitness trainer Isaac Boots recently shared some simple exercises we can all do at home during the colder months. All right, so uh, you say home workouts are, are effective, especially during winter. We don't want to get stagnant. Uh, so what, what's a move we can do to start strengthening? These are the simplest, most effective moves, okay. right? So ultimately, you want to reach your arms out okay. and just find your lower belly squeezing in really tight, just circling it back. You can get so much done with this okay. easy, simple move doing at home. Now, I'm adding weight to it, right? Yeah, a you weighted, have weights all over yeah, your body. So these are the Torched by Kilo Gear weights that adds a sensible amount of weight to the larger muscle group. Okay. So you actually end up burning 40% more calories. It's kind of like you're doing which a funky is amazing. chicken. Like exactly, it. it's a funky chicken moment. Wait, oh, you're what, burning what, how what many more calories? 40% more calories. Oh, wow. Wearing these weights that actually amplify the simplest move ever, okay? It's amazing. Aside from this, you can add a little squat. So you're gonna go down and just squeeze your booty tight, but Ooh. go as low as you, you can. Is that why your last your name's Boots? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now you can add a, a, a little variation. You can add a little balance moment, you know? Okay. Or if you're really feeling festive, really feeling festive, you can add a jump. Yes. I'm not that festive. Yes, exactly. So all of these, these things, really, you can do anywhere, so there's no excuse, okay. right? This next, I think, is the most important, the most comprehensive. We're gonna go down into a plank, no, okay? No. So, <laughs> we're gonna go into a plank here, right? Uh -huh. Oh boy. Al's gonna do a Liza I'm Minnelli routine on that chair, friend. okay? Oh. So you're gonna hold right here. Now, you can either just hold here, squeezing your booty, you work every part of your entire body. You can add a shoulder tap, if you want to add a little more stability through your arms, always engaging your core, or you can add a right knee to your left elbow to really get your lower body activated, exactly, but focusing on your breath. And the thing is, there's no such thing as failure. You can simply hold your plank, mm -hmm. you can add a shoulder tap, right. you can do all the variations and you get things done, I okay? I hope people are doing this at home with Let's us. Let's go, oh, baby. I hope they are too. It's a great little workout. Right? Yeah. Now, hands and knees. I know it's not often we find ourselves in this position. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> hands and knees. You're gonna lift your right leg bent, okay? You're gonna pulse back. And this is where you work dat booty, okay? Yeah, now, well. if you can't go on your knees, you can go on the chair. Yeah. <laughs> like so. Like this. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But look, you can actually add, you can hold the back of the chair or hold Al Roker. Oh. And you can touch your, your toe down, lift it. Oh, so I can ah. do that from the back. Exactly. From the back of the chair. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so hold on to that. Okay. okay? You're going to go coupe, lift into attitude. Ooh. Coupe. Coupe. Oh, coupe. Exactly. Exactly. So you're still working your lower belly, uh -huh. right? You lift it up. Now I want you to hold it up bent. You're just going to pulse it back. Pulse hey. it back. Yes, that's how we get that booty pop. Oh. Okay? <laughs> Very good. Yes. I don't think anybody wants this booty to pop. Give me five. <laughs> I think there are a number of Americans who would love that. Oh, we're not done yet. Kristen Sudeikis is a choreographer and founder of Forward Space, and she's going to teach us a fun dance workout. But first, we're going to warm up with a moving meditation. Okay, we all ready? Everybody yes. ready? <laughs> I've got two of the founding members from Ford Space. All right. Two, Rachel, hello, Keith. Hello. We've got some new teammates here. Okay. Our colleagues. So Our this colleagues. is a moving yes. meditation? We're moving meditation. Okay. So there, this is a key element of Ford Space, the moving meditation. We're just going to... Okay. Warm our hands up. That like I this. can do. Right. This we so, so far, far so good. Like so that. Far, so good. Just to ground ourselves and connect to ourselves. Now release a little of the tension in the hands that you might receive from gripping the phone and all that good sure. stuff. Yeah, we know that feeling. And then just throw the arms out, out. So you're releasing the tension. Hello, ball. Hey oh, hey oh, yeah. hey oh, hey oh. This does feel nice. It does. Yeah. It does. And let the shoulders, you know, sort of shrug. Now take up lots of space. So. Feet way far apart, arms in the air, looking up, and just taking a second right there. Take a deep breath in from below the floor. Exhale down, let's go again here. Four, three, maybe walk the feet around two. One, you can join us at home if you want. Yes. Throw the hands out again. Release some of the tension in the hands again. Good, good, I good. I hope you guys are doing this at home with us, because this feels amazing. It does yeah, feel good. Yes. We're good. starting there. So one arm up, one down, and then slowly coming in towards your center. Good, and then we're gonna go to the other side, slowly coming in towards your center and just aligning with yourself for a second. And then you're gonna go around your head like this, 
Or if you can't go over your head, okay, if that's not available, you can just go towards your chest. And you think of pulling, pulling some water Good. onto you, a release, okay. a little bit of relief. Okay. And then we're going to start dancing? We're going to start dancing. Okay. Okay. You know, here we go. Okay. So, here we go. we're going to combo. Okay. It goes wave, wave, shoulder. Just oh. that. Five, six, seven, and wave, wave, shoulder. Yes? Again, five, six, seven, and wave, wave. shoulder. Again, shoulder. five, shoulder. Yeah, we're just touching that shoulder. How's it going? Wave, shoulder, we're going on. Knee, take the coat off. Oh, take the coat take off. Take the coat Just off. Is it so, off? Take coat wave, off. shoulder, huh? knee, then which part? Take, take the, coat the coat off. That's right, and wave, shoulder, knee, knee then take, take the, the coat, coat off. off. Six, seven, and wave, wave. shoulder, knee, knee, take the coat off. Five, six, seven, and wave, Shoulder, yep, yep. A knee, take the coat off. Now, hug, hug, open, up, down. Again, hug, open, <laughs> up, this is and down, and hug. And then you start Wait. to give it a, a little sum when you get, you know. A little sum, sum? A little sum, sum. Okay, yeah. Hug, open, up, down, little faster. All right. Boom. And while you guys are doing ah, that, I'm hey, going to take right, Thank you so much. You are Thanks so to welcome. our backup group. We love the. We've never had backup dancers before. Hey. And that's all for this episode of Start Today. Don't forget, scan that QR code to sign up for our newsletter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Today All Day. Sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Now everybody loves a hearty meal. But when the cooking is done, nobody loves doing dishes. So today, we're making three delicious recipes that all come together in just one pot. I'm making a one pan chicken pot pie with some of my favorite spring veggies. I'm whipping up Tuscan style tortellini soup. And I'm making my flavor-packed Thai-inspired green curry noodles. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. Growing up, it was always a treat for me and my siblings to make frozen chicken pot pies when my parents were out to dinner and we had to fend for ourselves. And today I will be making a more grown up version of this classic comfort food. This recipe has some of my favorite veggies and I know your whole family will absolutely love it. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our onion going. Look at that stunning dice. Move those onions off to the side to prep the rest of our veg. This is fennel, gorgeous, gorgeous fennel. Bulb, fronds, and the stems, okay? So I really love using fennel in honestly any kind of cooking. I promise you all of that anise flavor is going to mellow out beautifully once it hits the pan. We have these fronds here. We're gonna just give them a nice rough chop. So we've taken the stem off, and then I'm going to cut it in half, like so. We'll go from the top to the back, like so. And then rock it through from the back to the front. Let's quickly do our celery. And the theme here is green. I don't know if you can tell. All green veggies, that's what we're working with today. Okay, finally our garlic clove. And you also don't have to worry about chopping this too fine. So let's get to sauteing. We are going to add in a nice hunk of unsalted butter. We are also going to add in some olive oil. Once it is all melted and as it starts bubbling like so, that is when we know to add in our veggies. These will all go in at the same time. These veggies are really running away from me here. <laughs> okay, 
We want these veggies to break down, to caramelize a bit, to develop their flavor. And while that is going, we are going to get to work on the rest of our veggies because believe it or not, we are adding even more vegetables to this already full vegetation experience. All right, so next up we have our kale. This is lacinato kale, also known as dinosaur kale. It is flat, it's not as crazy and curly like curly kale. And my favorite way to prepare it is I will take the bottom right where the stem is, grab either side, and then take my finger and pull that stem right through. And there you go. Okay, so while this is going, we are actually going to add even more flavor with some fresh thyme. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to bunch it on up in pieces, slice it thin, just like so. How about that? Fabulous. We're gonna get to work on our chicken. A great shortcut that I love to do is I love to use a rotisserie chicken. I am pulling off this skin just because we don't necessarily need it and we can chop this up. My siblings prefer white meat and I prefer dark meat with chicken, so it's good. We'll have a little for me and then the rest for my sibbies. Okay, looking good. So now that our veggies are ready to rock, it is time to create what I like to call an almost roux. <laughs> so we are just going to add in this all-purpose flour, but it's really important when you add in flour to a pot pie, to anything as a thickening agent, that you take the time to cook the flour down. So we wanna just keep cooking this down for about two to three minutes. Okay, it's time to thicken this up. We're gonna start by doing one cup of the stock. We wanna make sure that all of this flour breaks down. And now what we wanna do is we wanna bring this to a simmer to continue thickening it a bit more. Next up, we are going to add in our kale to wilt it and to also thicken up our mixture a bit. And now that this looks nice and thick, we're going to add in our final ingredients, our peas, our fennel fronds, and our chopped up chicken. This is my favorite thing to do with a homemade pot pie. I love using puff pastry, store-bought. I'm taking a little bit of all-purpose flour and just giving it a nice light dusting. Open it on up. This is one sheet of puff pastry. We're gonna give this one more light dusting of flour. Take your rolling pin. The main thing here is to make sure that you roll it out so that it fits whatever pan you are working with. And we're just going to fold it, bring our pan over, lift it up, and then open it up like a book and dress it right over the top. You cute, you gorgeous, I love ya. We wanna make sure that we have about one inch around our cast iron. And you can just trim the corners off of that pastry. I have egg wash right here. And the reason why we're popping this onto the top and brushing it over the top of our pastry is because if we don't, what's gonna happen is our pastry is gonna end up looking a little sad. So we're just taking a pastry brush and really delicately brushing that egg wash over the top and the sides of the pastry. Okay, we wanna make sure it has some ventilation. You wanna make sure that you have 
at least three, maybe four, right in the center of that pie so that steam can escape. And then my favorite little extra layer of pizzazz is to take some flaky salt and sprinkle it over the top of this pot pie. So this is going to go into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes and just check about halfway through. Oh man, our pot pie has cooled. We want it to cool for about 10 minutes after it comes out of the oven. And now there's only one thing left to do, slice it up and give it a taste. And then we're gonna give this a nice big scoop. Oh yeah. Look at that. Mmm. It is unbelievable how food can instantly transport you back to a moment. It is just bursting with spring beauty and energy. I love it. One more bite, because we deserve it. I absolutely love Italian food, just like everybody else. It's so comforting and it always tends to hit the spot. Now with minimal prep, my tortellini soup is just a thing to make at the end of a long day because it's just in one pot. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the big pot that you have in your kitchen. I'm gonna set it onto a medium high heat. Next, we're gonna move on to the sausage. This is spicy Italian sausage. I think it adds a lot of flavor. Just remove the casing and the sausage. Well, sticky little thing, isn't it? <laughs> then we're just gonna put this right into the pan right now. Squeeze that sausage right on out, right into that pot. Right now, I'm breaking up the meat, so that way it'll be dispersed. It'll cook a little bit faster. Let's move on to chop up our veggies. So I've got some onion here. We're just gonna dice this up, slice it in half. And you can do generous chunks. There we go. Moving on, we got some fresh tomatoes here. Gonna dice these up as well. And you know what? I'm thinking our sausage is about finished. Yeah, it's great. It's got a great color on there. We're gonna take a slotted spoon and we're gonna remove the sausage because we don't wanna take out the oil. We want the oil from that sausage to help out with the flavor. There we go. Now, since there's not a lot of oil left after the sausage, I am gonna add in just a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna add in my onions, I'm gonna saute those. You know I am a garlic lover, and if you love Italian food, you 
got to be a garlic lover too. Now, got some carrots here. Because they're so small, I'm not going to peel them. I'm just going to begin to dice them up as well. But just make sure you wash your carrots. Give that a nice stir. All right. In goes the garlic. Slide that on in. Give it another stir. And we're going to cook this for about one minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to deglaze the bottom of this pot. We're going to do that with some red wine because we're fancy here in the Today All Day Kitchen. So grab your favorite red wine. I'm going to be using a blend. And we're going to add about a half a cup. There we go. And if you want to toast yourself during this recipe, I won't judge you. That's your business. Mm -hmm. Let this simmer down. And in go the tomato in here with the onions and the red wine and garlic. Let that simmer for a minute. I'm gonna finish preparing the rest of our veggies. Basil. I'm gonna roll them up, stack the leaves. And I'm just gonna just like this. Beautiful. That should be enough. I'm gonna reserve some too for garnish at the very end. Check back in on our tomatoes and onions and look at this. You can see how thick it is. It's kind of slushy. That's exactly the texture that we want. I think this looks good. What about y'all? Yeah, Kevin, it looks real good. Okay, let's start to bring everything else together. I'm gonna add in some oregano. Adding back in the sausage as well. Give this a good stir. And then our stock, pour it in. This is some chicken stock. Another pinch of salt, some black pepper. And lastly, I'm gonna sprinkle in some basil. Boom. Do we want some heat? Yeah, Kev, we want the heat, bring the heat. All right, some red pepper, boom. I'm gonna crank up the heat so that it comes to a boil and then as soon as it starts to boil, you're gonna wanna reduce the heat down to a simmer. take some kale. All I'm doing is folding the other kale over and I'm gonna take out the big stem. Take it at the very top and just drag the knife along the stem. Comes right out. And then just do a chop. Just like this. This is great. Still simmering. Ready, in, go. 
The kale. Beautiful. And this is some cheese fuel tortellini. I'm gonna cook this for about five minutes. You can cover and let this simmer. All right, I think this is done. I'm gonna turn off the heat of our pot and we're gonna plate this amazing one pot Tuscan tortellini soup. And this soup deserves the good bowls, okay? I'm just gonna say that, it deserves it. Get a big scoop. Oh yeah, we've got the color from the carrots, color from the kale, and color from the tomatoes. Mm, beautiful. Let's garnish. Pepper. A little bit of dried oregano. If you want some, beautiful. Basil, there we go. And look at this, holy smokes. Cannot wait to devour this soup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my lord, that is a delicious soup. Now, I'm not team soup only in the wintertime. I'm team soup all year long. You wanna come home to a nice warm hug. This is it. from scratch might sound intimidating, but I promise it's actually pretty easy. After trying this recipe, you may never go back to that jarred stuff. I'm gonna kick things off with my curry paste. Traditionally, this is made in a mortar and pestle, but this girl is busy, so we're gonna put everything in a food processor and it comes out just great. So we're gonna first start with some coriander stems. So get those right into the food processor. Then we're gonna use one small shallot or half of this large one here. And I like to quarter it so it's easier to blend up in the food processor. So get that right in. And then we're gonna use four cloves of garlic. One Thai green chili. You could just take the stem right off like this. And you could cut this in half if you'd like so it's easier to blend. And then we're gonna use one inch piece of fresh ginger. Fresh is key. The traditional ingredient in this is usually galango, but it's not readily available, so ginger is the next best substitute. And the best way to peel ginger is using a spoon, because if you run your spoon right against the meat of the ginger, the peel comes right off. How cool is that? So pop that right in. Next, we want half a stalk of fresh lemongrass. I'm just gonna give this a rough chop. And we're gonna get that beautiful lemongrass right in. I'm using one fresh lime. Let's get that all in. So then we wanna just cut this in half. You can use your hand or a little citrus squeezer and give it a good squeeze. And we have a few more remaining ingredients. We want some toasted cumin seeds. 
and some toasted coriander seeds. Then we wanna add a pinch of white pepper. This is deceiving, white pepper is quite spicy, so a pinch is more than enough. And then a pinch of kosher salt. And we're gonna whiz this up. And just keep pulsing. Okay, so I think we're good. So I'm gonna get it out into a bowl and then I'm gonna grab my veggies, tofu, and noodles for the rest of my recipe. So we've had our tofu here sitting in some paper towel. We've pressed it so you'll notice that it's a little bit drier from when you open the package. So I like small cubes because I want them to be bite-sized and able to fit on my spoon or fork. Plus, if you make them smaller, then they'll cook better and crisp up. Okay, the next step is tossing them in some cornstarch. So you just wanna lightly coat them. Great, so let's turn our skillet on. And we're gonna wanna get this to about a medium high heat. Coat the bottom with some neutral cooking oil. I'm gonna start giving them a flip. This is what you want. This is gonna be flavor packed. These are looking great. You could see the color, the crisp. So I'm gonna get them removed and then start prepping my veg. First, I'm gonna slice my onion. We're just using a medium to large yellow onion. So I'm gonna do a quick slice on each half. So our onion is done. And next we wanna do one long red chili. These actually aren't that spicy, but they're gonna add a lot of flavor and they're gonna look beautiful against the green curry. So we're just gonna give a quick slice on this, just basically thin circles. Great. And next we wanna slice a green bell pepper. This one's a big one. So cut this in half. And I just like to scoop out the center to clean it up. And then similarly, we're just going to run our knife through it like the way we did for the onion. Great. And lastly, we have some carrot. We're gonna try doing this julienne because I like it to match the onions and the peppers. Okay. And now the one pan or pot magic begins. So we're gonna take the same pan that we use to crisp up our tofu in. While that's heating up, we're gonna coat it with a little bit more of that neutral oil. And now I'm gonna add in all of my veggies. Ooh, I always love that sizzle. Mm -hmm. So we wanna saute it for about five minutes or so. And to help with the process, we're gonna add in a bit of salt. The salt is gonna help release all of the moisture in the vegetables. Now that our onions are looking a little bit translucent, it's time for our curry paste. It smells so good. We're gonna let this cook down for about three to four minutes. Once you notice that the vegetables have softened and it's browning on the bottom, it's time for our liquids. So we're gonna add in about two cups of water. And some full fat coconut milk. And now is when we add our green peas. Stir this all together. And then we wanna bring this to a slow simmer. So while we wait for our curry to come to a slow simmer, I wanna talk about the noodles. So I'm actually using edamame noodles, which are noodles made out of edamame beans. They're super delicious and they're a beautiful green color. Okay, so our curry is simmering. So now it's time to add our noodles.
You just wanna make sure all the noodles have some moisture on them. They're all covered with the liquid. Great. Then we're gonna cover it and let it cook for about five minutes. I'm gonna clean up some of these bowls and get ready to taste. Okay, so our noodles have been simmering for about five minutes, so let's give it a check. These will look so good. Notice that all the liquid has reduced, but it's still nice and saucy, and the veggies are still vibrant in color. All right, let's get it plated. So beautiful. I love the way the carrots look in this because they really add that pop of color. Okay, now for our tofu. We haven't forgotten about that. So they've actually cooled off here, which is great because now they're nice and crispy. And then we're gonna add some of our garnishes. So we have some fresh lime, some fresh coriander, and we reserved some of our fresh red chili. Look at this, can you believe this was made in only one pan? I just have to give this a taste. Are you kidding me? It's like I'm walking the streets of Bangkok. It's so vibrant, it's so fragrant. You should always eat with your eyes first. And this is certainly a dish that I'm eating with my eyes first. Good morning, guys. Welcome to The Boost. And I cannot wait to start your day off with some holiday cheer. So let us get started with a heartwarming story. Imagine this, meeting your biggest hero just when you need it most. For 43 years, Make-A-Wish has been granting wishes to children with critical illnesses all around the world, more than 900,000 and counting. Jacob Soboroff visited Universal Studios for one of the very latest Dwayne The Rock Johnson with a very special surprise for a remarkable group of kids. Take a look. On a sparkling 78 degree December day in Southern California, a group of very special kids and their families began a journey to fulfill a wish. 21 very deserving wish children are getting their wishes granted to meet Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and they are over the moon excited. I'm his biggest fan. Best eyebrow. <laughs> All of it happened at Universal Studios Hollywood. I want to see your lip and arm wrestle in. <laughs> Enter The Rock. Mr. Johnson. How are you, sir? Nice to see you. Good to see you. So today is one of the biggest days in Make-A-Wish history. It's unbelievable. We're in the back lot here at Universal, and they're going to be on a tram coming up. They have no idea I'm going to be here. He got back in the car. Here comes the tram. We got a pretty cool looking pickup truck over there. Yeah! How are you doing? I'm so good. It's so good to see you. Should I get on this tram with you guys? Yeah! All right, let's do it. For these kids and families, it was a dream come true. We told you we were going to feed them here, but I didn't tell you. Yeah. Like, like, like this. The Rock giving the Universal Backlot Tour. Toss Kevin Hart in the water. Yes! <laughs> but then the shark would still be hungry. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Pleasing his fans is in The Rock's DNA, and he took time throughout the day to do just that. What's the best part about the tour so far? Thank you. I was just fishing for that compliment. But make a wish, and these kids are in his heart and have been since his own dad, Rocky, granted the first New Jersey wish 40 years ago. This little boy named Bobby, I'll never forget it, his last wish was to meet my dad. It puts things in, into perspective for you right away. So for the last 25 years, he's followed in those footsteps, making wishes come true. You could pick any charity in any part of the country, any part of the world, really, to work with, but you have chosen this charity. Why? These are kids, and man, the cards that they are dealt, they didn't ask for it, but they're playing these hands as best they can. You know, I'm, I, I get emotional. These kids are so strong. Yeah. On a day where he was only supposed to spend an hour with these families, he spent five <laughs> providing entertainment, hugs, and granting Adelaide's special wish. Yeah. You're gonna get your foot. It was so clear that giving back is a genuine part of his character. <laughs> I felt compelled to ask him about swirling presidential rumors. Today you get to help you know, dozens of children. 
you sure you don't want to be president of the United States? <laughs> um, here's what I could tell you with 100% certainty and yeah. surety is that I believe in uh, working hard, controlling the controllables, kicking ass, and always give back. That's what I could tell you. So it's not a How, no. You see what? It's not a no. <laughs> see what I it's did? not a no. <laughs> and he's starting with these kids. What I love about days like today is it's a way for us to show people that there's a lot of good out there, man. So I like that. Speaking of epic surprises, I got to visit PSMS 124, a school in Queens where students are so very passionate about giving back. And that's why we decided it was time to do a little something for them. Check it out. Be the change. Be the change. Be the change. The students at PS MS124 are committed to being change makers. Hi, we're here for the holiday toy drive. Do you guys have any toys? Yeah. yeah. The K through eight school in Queens, New York, has more than 1,000 students who all share one goal: to give back to others as much as they can. Be the change is their school motto, and they're living up to it by helping a new cause each month. A sock drive in October, a food drive in November, and now they are Santa's elves collecting toys for their holiday toy drive. Let's go. I visited the school to meet up with these incredible students. When I walked in your school, I could feel the vibe. There's something different about your school. Why do you want to be the change? If something is wrong and nobody changes it, it's just going to keep getting worse and worse. Mm. But if somebody changes that, it can spread kindness. Kindness is important, isn't it? A small act of kindness can change someone's life entirely. I know that there are those struggling, and if they're struggling, it's a struggle that we struggle together. We know that your generous hearts aren't just around this time of the year, but why is it extra important to give at this time of year. We're all humans. We should be helping each other out and everyone deserves to be happy. We're collecting toys and giving them to the people who are less fortunate. We're making their lives a bit easier and like less stressful, which makes all of us really proud of this whole school. We're doing the toy drive at the school. At PSMS 124, the teachers give too. It's a Title I school and many of its families are in need. Amy Workola and Erica Denuso spearhead faculty-wide efforts to help the kids they love. If we can give them any semblance of peace, love, care, I will always do that work. Staff members anonymously buy a winter coat and a holiday present for every student in need and host a big Thanksgiving feast for all the families in temporary housing. We were able to have the entire staff there helping. The whole community just came together. Everything that is purchased is purchased by our staff with their own money. You could say the spirit of giving echoes through the hallways here. So you collected how many toys today? Uh, I'd say about 50-ish. Let's go check it out, come on. But little do they know, it's about to kick into high gear. That does not look wow. like 50. Oh Come God. on in. Yes. Is this more than 50 toys? Yes. yes. Macy's and Toys R Us donated 1,000 toys to your toy drive. Yes. We actually have another surprise in an effort to help you guys help the students. Macy's is giving you a $3,000 gift certificate. Do you love your teachers? Yes. Yeah. Meanwhile, just down the hall, hundreds of students gathered for our biggest surprise yet. What do your shirts say? Yeah. By the way, this school is the change. I am so proud of you because you guys are focused on giving things away. But you know what? It is time for someone to give back to you. Count down with me. Three, two, one. Macy's and Toys R Us is gonna give every single student in here a Christmas present. Jingle bells, jingle all the way. 
a joyous celebration of the season of giving with children who live it every single day. Happy holidays! When we come back, a mother-daughter duo making history. We'll explain after the break. The Boost, this next story is about a history-making mother and daughter, the only simultaneous sitting judges in Pennsylvania. In fact, they are in neighboring towns, no less. Their story is one of courage and of believing in yourself. Let's take a look at how they got here. Deborah Lukens and her daughter Jody Griffiths say they never dreamt of becoming attorneys, let alone judges. Like so many, their paths were not always perfectly planned out or what they expected. I found myself <laughs> single at 34 years old, and when I went to tell my parents, my father's first thing out of his mouth was, good, now you'll go to law school. I had two children at home, I had no money and no job, and I started law school at 37 years old. Deborah took a leap. She enrolled at Widener University School of Law in Delaware. She says she couldn't have done it without friends and family. I had over an hour drive each way, and if I was running late, they would just grab my kids and take them into their house. So I never had to worry about that. It does take a village, I'm not gonna lie. Deborah graduated from law school in 1991. She started out in the district attorney's office. Two years later, she ran for the magisterial district judge seat in White Marsh Township in Pennsylvania, and she won. It was the beginning of three decades on the bench. Years later, her daughter Jody wasn't sure of her own path. I was undecided, so it was between teaching and law. My college roommate was taking the LSAT, so I was like, okay, I'll sign up, I'll take the LSAT. Jody ended up attending the same law school as her mom. I remember going to law school and calling her. I mean, I was 11 when she graduated law school. So I was like, how did you do this with two young kids at home raising us and putting us to sleep and then studying for law school exams. Jody's graduation was a special moment for her and her mom. She handed me my diploma when I graduated law school and we were the only mother daughter at that time, which was very significant. You know, there was a lot of father son, there was a couple father daughters, but we were the only mother daughter pair. Jody went to work as a public defender. Two years ago, she and her mom would hit another historic first when Deborah swore Jody in as the magisterial district judge in the township right next to hers. And now, as Deborah faces retirement, they reflect on how far they've come. It's not easy. <laughs> so when I meet people, young women that say they can't do it, I say, yes, she yes, can. You can. I did it, and this is how you do it. Share the experience, show other people how to get past it. And I did, I was lucky enough. Lucky and determined and hardworking, Judge Deborah Lukens is here along with her daughter, Judge Jody Griffiths. Your honors, thank you for being here so much. Thank you for having us. What's it like? We just showed you, this is your life. What is yeah. it like for you to, to be in this moment and, and to share it with your daughter this way? This is one of the most exciting things in the world for both of us, and I think they've told you, 
as I swore Jody in that day, I said, okay, we need the Today Show. That, <laughs> that to me was making it. So you have made it for Oh my us. gosh, well you guys made it. I mean, Jody, first of all, your mom officiated your wedding. Yes. And she was such an example for you. Absolutely. Did you really, until you went to law school, did you fully grasp what she had done as a mother of two little kids, divorced, deciding, you know what, I'm gonna go to law school and pull this off. I knew she was different, you know? I knew that she was strong and that she raised us and she was everything to us. But like I said, I mean, when I was in law school and sitting there studying and doing exams, it was like, how did you do this with two little kids at home? I mean, I'm in a bubble just doing law school all on my own. And she had to take care of us, put us to sleep, and then focus on it. I used to call her all the time. I'm like, oh my God, how did you do this? Well, how did you do it? I was angry. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, just like, it was a tough divorce and it was getting back on your feet. And, uh, you know, remolding myself with two little girls. In your, uh, in your 30s, it's not easy yeah. to do. Your father seems incredible. Like he just said, well, we're going to pick ourselves up and we're going to law school. Oh, there was no question. That was all it was. I said, I have no money. He says it doesn't matter. And uh, he actually enrolled me in a course to take the LSATs wow. under my maiden name, paid for it, and told me afterwards when he picked me up and drove me. Wow. And he drove me every single night of that class wow. for three months. Well, that's when you say it takes a village, it does take it a village. Now to the incredible story of a young patient with big dreams and his doctor who has her own special connection with the hospital. Harry Smith shares their story. Ayan Gupta is good at many things, be it Rubik's Cube or Bottle Toss. He has his own YouTube channel. Italy. For him, conquering challenges has been child's play until... I couldn't believe it. I continued to say it was a lab error. Um, a lab error. He was completely normal with no complaints, no symptoms. No symptoms of acute lymphatic leukemia. Ion's parents are doctors, fortunate to live in Memphis. We knew St. Jude was the perfect place to be for the cancer that my child had. Treating childhood cancer is not kid stuff. The regimens are difficult. What parts of it did you not like? I didn't like taking the liquid medicines. So then I learned how to take pills. How much of a difference did it make to learn how to take a pill? It was much better. They eased his mind by talking to him through every single step of treatment or procedure. Ayan's doctor, it turns out, has a little extra in her resume. My name is Maggie Cupid Link. I take care of kids with cancer. Dr. Cupid Link herself was a patient at St. Jude when she was in college. What was the diagnosis? Ewing sarcoma, which is one of the types of childhood bone cancer. I was 19. She was hospitalized for a year. My treatment included lots of chemotherapy, as well as a really big surgery where they removed the bones and the tumor and replaced it with metal. So this is my scar from the surgery. 19-year-old Maggie was not a model patient. I wish I could say that I was just had a great attitude the whole time, but I did not. Until she took a good look at her fellow patients. They're so resilient and genuine and not afraid of death the way that grown-ups are. And then I knew if I live, then this is the kind of doctor I'll be for them. What does it mean to you to have a physician who's quite responsible for your son's health, mm -hmm. who was actually a patient here once herself? It means a lot to us. I think somewhere in the back of my head, I thought um, this child may not be able to do what he needed to do. Um, but when Dr. Maggie walked in and she told me that she herself was a patient and that she overcame all of this and is doing what she's doing now, I became hopeful <laughs> that Why he's allowed to dream and he's allowed to be whatever he wants to be. Yep. There's nothing better than the feeling of knowing that I'm helping these kids in a way that is unique because I understand something that they're going through. All of which makes for a really good story, but there's more. When I was just 21, I went into menopause. Dr. Cupid Link and her husband planned on adopting, but... So they woke up, the ovaries, which there's actually not medical literature on. Yes, Dr. Cupid Link got pregnant. It definitely is one of those moments where you realize that you're not in control of what happens to you. Healing is not only about science. 
St. Jude brought us hope and faith, which was very crucial to get through this process. We have definitely evolved in a way we never thought we would. Isn't that something? It totally is. Coming up, the small town spirit that helped save a supermarket that offers so much more than just groceries. That's after the break. on the booth spotlighting a very special supermarket. After the owner of the grocery store in Sheffield, Illinois decided to retire, this small town got creative to keep the vital community resource open. Maggie Vespa has the story. Hours west of Chicago and a world away from urban life sits a town so small it runs without stoplights. In Sheffield, Illinois, the population is measured by the hundreds and the checkout clerk knows your name. It's been like that since Cliff Winger opened the town's only grocery store in 1940. He enjoyed the whole small town life. Royal Supermart fed Sheffield for decades. Winger's son, John, took over in the 80s. Then, a few years ago, life changed. You were retiring. That's, that's correct, but I don't want to leave the town without a grocery store. Fear spreads fast in small towns. Driving distances to pick up milk, it makes it more challenging. Well, a lot of times you need just an onion. I don't want to have to drive a half an hour to go get an onion. I'm raising little kids here. Enter Elizabeth Pratt, a nurse who runs a nonprofit focused on health. A lot of people are left convenience store shopping for their main source of food, and that just it doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> she offered to buy the store if she could raise the funds. Was that like music to your ears? Oh, yes. If fear spreads fast, generosity goes at warp speed. Personal and corporate donations topped half a million dollars. 43, 43. Pratt renovated, making Royal Supermart energy efficient, adding self-checkout, and cementing local access to fresh meat and produce. How proud is everyone working here? Oh, I think they're all very proud. Proud knowing this tiny town can feed itself. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and some young photographers are strengthening their skills thanks to a unique experience offered by National Geographic. It takes aspiring photographers from all over the world and teaches them to capture a moment in time. Peter Alexander shares the story of this empowering program. They are breathtaking and bold. Through their eyes, National Geographic photographers for years have given us a unique glimpse around the globe, revealing sights we'd otherwise never see. 
And for the past two decades, they've handed over their cameras to young people in some of the farthest corners of the world. Botswana. Myanmar. South Sudan. New, New Zealand. Zealand. Mississippi. These aspiring photographers learn how to get comfortable behind the camera, building skills and confidence, and developing deep connections with one another at what's called PhotoCamp. PhotoCamp is a photography mentoring program for young people around the world. What an unbelievable <laughs> experience for these students. Oh yeah, and for me. Veteran photographer Kirsten Elsner is PhotoCamp's founder. What does the world look like through a young person's eyes? It often looks very fresh and unjaded because sometimes they've never picked up a camera before. There's like a unique so, authenticity. Yeah, we show them the rules of composition, but we always say, go ahead and break them. Sometimes I'm very socially anxious and the photographs have helped me break through that barrier and like talk with people. Ankita Das was first invited to photo camp in her hometown of Calcutta, India, where she took this candid shot of a rickshaw puller taking a well-earned break. What do you hope to express with your photos? I really just want to make meaningful connections. She's among the more than 3,000 photo campers Nacho has hosted across 35 countries. Their images now featured in a new book celebrating photo camp's 20th anniversary. Which visually, which one works? During each week-long program, students are connected with world-class Nacho photographers like Lynn Johnson. You can see the transformation. You can feel the fear in the beginning and the reticence and then you can feel that start to loosen. One tradition, each student writes a note and tucks it into their camera bag to be read by another camper in another country. To start this note off, my name is Zion. You will have such a great few days. Scratch that. You will have a blast at photo camp. Just gotta have trust and text me on Instagram. <laughs> They're like pen pals around the world. Around the world and here at home. They've taken a picture of you. <laughs> These sessions have helped Pox Young find his voice, empowering him to capture photos of his people on the Nez Pierce Reservation in Idaho and the endangered wildlife that shares that land. I imagine your family must be so incredibly proud of you having this experience. They're like, just go for it. Speak with your heart, speak with your tamina. That's what we call it. To Minna, or mm -hmm. your heart? Yeah. When people on the reservation look at your work, mm -hmm. what do you hope they say? That that's me, you know. Their authentic yeah, selves. They're, yeah, their authentic selves. All while building a bond with one another and offering a picture of the future. Coming up, we've got the latest viral video to boost your day. Stay with us. We got one more video. It'll leave you with a smile. Take a look. Sunday, Sunday. Mama, she's on a Sunday. Then Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Okay, okay, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. All of the Eastern Thursday. Here we go. Sunday, Sunday. Rain and snow return. Sunday, Sunday. East Coast, mountain snow, desert sunshine, yeah. out west, heavy rain through the Gulf and Texas, and then Sunday, Sunday. Sunny but chilly. 
Oh, it's so good. Chanel joins our favorite morning boost of the week, maybe the year. Yes. Two-year-old Justin Gunter Jr. and his obsession with Al's famous line. Okay, after we showed, showed this video, we shared it. We knew that we had to get Al and Justin together. Guess what? It's all happening. Justin's here <laughs> along with his dad, Justin Sr., and his mom, Shelly. Shelly, by the way, part of our NBC family. We're so happy that you're here with us in South Florida. You're an anchor on NBC6, just down from Miami. But guys, we're just missing one person, Justin. Who are we missing? Well, Who's right. here? We're missing oh, somebody. We're missing somebody. You come to see me. Come to see me. Sunday, Sunday! <laughs> Sunday, yeah. Sunday. <laughs> Hello, Justin. Hug. How are you, buddy? Give him a hug. Oh, oh, my little Sunday, Sunday yes. guy. That's it for today. We hope we're able to start your day off with a little positivity. And guess what? We will see you next time with more of The Boost right here on Today All Day. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today. Hello and welcome to Start Today. Now, as we look back on this year, our community members have a lot to be proud of. They've tackled every monthly challenge so far, and we got one more to close out 2023. If you want to join in on the fun, just scan the QR code to subscribe to our newsletter and connect with over a half million folks on a mission to get healthy. On this episode, we're going to share easy hacks to help you simplify your daily routine, tips to eat healthy, and let's not forget the workouts, including some dance moves to help ring in the new year. This is Start Today. Let's kick things off with our fitness leader, Stephanie Mansoor, and this month's aerobic challenge. So we love a good throw, uh, like a little flashback Friday here, Steph. Yeah, we're right. talking aerobics, but this is something you did in college. Actually, it is. So, you know, I grew up playing oh. sports, and when I got to college, I stopped this. playing sports. I had to find something fun that would get me moving in college. Like many people, I gained the freshman 15, but then 20, 25 pounds was really unhappy with how I looked, how I felt. So I started dancing around in my dorm room. Room, and then I started an aerobics TV Wait, show at University of Michigan. Oh, this is, so you've been doing yeah. this for a minute. Wow, look at those moves. <laughs> hey, now, back it Almost up. Almost 20 years ago there, guys. Oh, yeah. We, we joke, but aerobics and these little movements, they're fun to do, and it's a great workout. Yeah, absolutely. And especially now, people are busy. They're stressed. Mm -hmm. Look at your workout as a fun time okay. where you can entertain yourself. Just dance around to the beat, and you'll burn calories and feel better mentally, too. Oh, What's our that. first move? Yeah, let's, and let's bring you in here, too, because Jessica, she is um, – Jessica Miller, she's in Connecticut. All three of her kids are adults now, out of the house. And you have said you found community with the Start Today team. I did, I did. And I'm so glad that she changes up the workout. Steph changes up the workout each month, and I'm excited and wanted to ask a question about how to get aerobic activity into the workout. Yeah, you know, this is something everyone can do at home here. We're gonna start with a simple march in place, okay? So pumping those arms, marching to the beat, and then, oops. Am I losing I'm something? I'm, I'm, I know. Losing, I'm losing jewels. Oh. Yikes. I can't even pick that up. <laughs> All right, so we're marching here, and now what we're going to do is a side step. So we're going to do side step, side step, side step. Yes, I know. Okay. Ideally, you'd want to wear those tennis shoes, but this little basic movement, you can do barefoot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> On the carpeting, it's fine because you won't slip. Just be careful here. Okay. All right, so we got this side step. Now we're going to do a skater. So we're tapping the foot backwards and reaching the arm forwards. Nice. Doesn't this feel good? And the thing is, you really don't need a lot of space. Exactly. Like, home. Yes, I used okay. to do this in my dorm room in college. And the last move Clearly. here is we're going to work the arms here, work the abs. Woo, like a dance hey move. Now. Al, this looks dancing. great. Way to go, Al. You should be dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. You should be. Oh, and then we have to pay for that. Sorry. Uh. And then go ahead and just march in place. All right. All right. Yep. That is fun. That was good. All right. So, yeah. uh, Okay. Daniel Kalaji, what's your, what's your question? 
Yeah, so I just joined the NBC family, and it's Welcome. been thank you, thank you, and it's been the best few months, but the busiest few months. Well, now, as we know, ready. <laughs> so, Stephanie, what small aerobic routines can I implement into my daily schedule to feel mentally happy and healthy, especially in December, yes. the winter months? It's getting colder outside and darker earlier. I know motivation can be waning. So, if you're at home right now, or if you're at the office, I want you to do some heel taps. So, we just stand in place. Tap one heel, and we're actually going at a very high beats per minute here, guys. We've got, yeah, we're going too yes, fast. we're going pretty fast. So <laughs> when you go to today.com slash start today, you're going to get the two workout videos. I've got a slower paced version and a higher paced version. Both are low impact. <laughs> we're going to add the arms. <laughs> we're going to add the arms here. Want to get a little every, yes. extra everything. <laughs> Get that heart rate elevated. And then our last move I want to show you guys is something really fun, okay. the pony. So oh, we're going to go pony. side to side, side to side. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Nice. One, two, three. Now we add the arms and up. Oh, it is. Nice. Yes. Awesome. awesome. And then we keep going. And this is so much fun. Just play your favorite song. Do we have a different idea of fun? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank and this will keep you moving all month long. Up next, Allie Love is back with some easy hacks to streamline and simplify our lives. Plus, she's going to share her favorite tips and products to help us prepare for that busy travel season. We'll be right back. We're back. These days, we all have got busy schedules, and it can feel like there's an endless list of things to do. But today, contributor Allie Love has just what we need to simplify our daily routines. Allie, these are things that are doable little things, because sometimes little big things. steps aren't easy. Yes, I'm passionate about the economy of energy. Okay. Meaning, if we do some habits and put them into our everyday life, what ends up happening, we have time to do the things we love. Okay. First up, how many times have you carried loads of shoes? We have a comfortable shoe, and then we have a presentation shoe, a heel and a flat. Right, we have a well, flat to walk around the city Exactly, in and so what we want to do is we want to remove the fact of carrying multiple shoes and replace it with one. We have passion footwear. We have our model, Julie, here. It's going to show us how it goes. Julie? Julia. What, uh, wait, Julia. Julia. So yes. wait, what, what's so happening with you these? have a heel, and basically it turns into a flat. You click no, it, you and it comes not. off. Yes. Wait. So now she has a heel, and this is about to turn. She's taking it off, and it's going to go ahead, take it off, take it off. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it's going to turn into a flat. Look at that. So in, instead of carrying multiple shoes around, you're going to go ahead and have one shoe that does multiple things. That's what we want to do. We want to remove the carrying of multiple shoes and replace it oh, got that. with All just right, one that's shoe. That's good. Look at that. That's a great, I will say, passion footwear, that is a great design. Julia, great job. Yes, okay, so ordering All right. out is something that we do because we feel like it saves us time, yes. and you're like, the food is fine, but yes. what do you say? Especially when it comes to lunch. Mm -hmm. Most of us spend a lot of time yeah. in the middle of the day figuring yeah. out, what do I want to eat? Yeah. Sometimes we kind of like 
choose the unhealthy mm -hmm. option. Mm -hmm. Here, what we want to do is a stitch in time saves nine. Okay. We want to go ahead and prep our meals. Okay. We want to prep our lunch. We have some fajitas here, protein and vegetables. Yummy. And we pre pre prep these because they're healthy. Mm -hmm. We know we love them. We know we love them. And guess what? You get more time back in lunch to actually just relax and take a beat for yourself. Okay. I like that. That's important, right? Yeah. So you got a healthy meal and you saves time. Yes. <clears throat> All right, Hoda. Now this one, some of you folks don't turn off just yet, mm -hmm. okay? They, we're going to talk about stairs. We're going to remove the stairs. I know I might have lost some yeah. of you, but hear me out. Okay. We're, we're, remo thing. we're removing the elevators, actually. We're removing the elevators, and we are going to replace them with stairs. Now, the reason for that is you're getting an everyday yep. workout, yep. and more importantly, you can have rules that work for you. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're going anywhere between the bottom and the fifth floor, maybe you use the stairs. Okay? Maybe it's the third floor. Maybe it's mm -hmm. the first floor. But you figure out what works for you. This is a healthy option. Remove the elevator. Replace with stairs. Once in a while. Gabby Giffords, who was the senator from Arizona, the congresswoman from Arizona who was shot, was here. And she has trouble with motor skills. Mm -hmm. And we asked, do you want the elevator? And you know what she said? Always the, the stairs. stairs. She yes. walked up and we thought, if she's doing it, we're doing it. We can do it. it. Exactly. All right. Let's get rid of self-talk and let's love ourselves. You, you love this. Yeah. I love this. We are removing negativity. Okay. We are replacing it with positivity. How do we do that? Mm -hmm. Well, we're making sure that our post-it notes, we talk about this all the mm -hmm. time, whether they're at our locker, on our desk, or in front on of us. On your Instagram. On your you Instagram. Have good ones. I have a ton yes. of them to remind you of who you are, how great you are, how well you're doing. Yes. You can put it as a screensaver on your phone so when you you use your phone as often as you do, you're seeing those positive words. And then, of course, our girlfriend group. We can make sure that we have a group just to send positive information. Love so it. remove the negativity, right. replace it with positivity. So our hair. We know that heat and hair go together, but you say yes. no. I say no. Remove the compound effect of heat on our hair. For many of us that use a flat iron or the curling iron, what we want to do is replace them with these heatless curling sets. So you can go to sleep in them. You can put Wait. them in your hair. Yeah, they're comfortable. You see this on TikTok, on Instagram. Okay. You put them so in your you hair. Put it in, in you wake up, and they're and soft. Look at you. you look great. And you're there. Imagine you are. going to bed and waking up with a new do, honey. <laughs> She's so, doing it. All right, it just takes the stress off your hair, which is exactly. one less thing that yeah. you have to worry hair about. Hair is a part of your body. You want it to be healthy. I've been waiting Lastly, for this one. Give it to me. What are right we talking away, about? Okay? I am guilty of this one. We need to remove the fact that we don't eat breakfast anymore. We right. need to replace it with eating breakfast. And the way to do that is to adopt it to our busy schedule, okay. making sure that you cook in advance, similar to the fajitas. You cook it in advance, you pack it in the fridge, and then you go ahead and grab it out, cut it in squares. You feed your family, your friends. You can put it in your bag. You need a hot snack. bowl. This is an egg casserole, and we should dig in. So all of these simple habits, the economy of energy mm. and time, mm. they're healthy, and they make you a better mm. person. And with the holidays coming up, so many of us are gearing up for the busy travel season. That doesn't mean, though, your health has to take a back seat. Allie also stopped by Hoda and Jenna to share her favorite tips to make traveling a breeze. So okay. you're, like, you're a strategy person. I am a strategy she lays person. it out. I like to fit a lot of things in a very small area, okay. just like most people. Okay. So the first thing I recognize is that bag with zippers, like as my personal carry-on, is not my jam. Okay. okay. The reason for that, I don't know if you have like a cup of tea or you have things in your hand, and all of a sudden you get to the gate and they're like, can I see your passport? Oh. And you're like, and you're like I need I to need get in there. So in this bag stands up. You need a bag yep. that stands up. That's, by the way, so cute. Yes, cute. opens up and everything's inside. And what okay. I do, because this could be a jungle, right. in all honesty, mm -hmm. is I put things in pouches. I color code my pouches. Wait, color so, code? Yes. So I have Allie. one pouch. I know. What's the I know. Yeah. Like, I have one pouch for, like, medicine. So I'm like, all my medicine's in here. It's in the bag. Right. Electronics. We're talking about, we were talking right. about headphones just yeah. now. Everything from phone chargers, headphones are in yeah. one bag. Yeah. Another Makeup. thing, my snacks, snacks and then all my skincare yeah. goes in there. So I just pull out a zip, Wait. open it up. She really needs to help us see, badly. It's, you should see Hoda's bag. Open it up a zip bag. And mine, for that matter. I'm yeah. not going to throw stones. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Now let's talk. Let's talk snacks. One thing you do, which which sort of surprised me, is you do not eat a big meal before you fly. I do not. I don't know Why? how I'm going to feel. I don't yeah. know if you get a little bloated, a little gassy sometimes on flights yeah. or long trains. Or you don't feel well. You just, just don't yeah. feel well. So, so, and also, I like you're going to be sitting for a very long so time. So if you're going to be sitting, you're not moving, you don't really need the nutrients, no. right? So what I do is one of those little pouches, like I'm a pouch queen, I have all my snacks. I love bone broth. You add hot water. You, hot are, water. you are having bone broth on the plane? I am, honey. It's fabulous. Girl, you're you one of those people. Animal. You're one of those people. I'm Let like, me can smell. I get a couple so of water, please? It smells like gravy. 
This is great to de-bloat. I will. It tastes really? good. Wait, I love, love it. Hold on. I'm going to be drinking Wait, this on the way. Pouches? Yes, they're little pouches that go in your snack pouch right over there. Mix. Hot you water just put spray hot everywhere. Water in? This yes, is how it tastes. It. You take it. a water bottle. You put your Wait, hot water. We should be having mug. bone broth. We're Lots way behind the time. Little hacks that change your life. Okay, I love next. this. Okay. Oatmeal as well. I love pretzels. Oh, oatmeal. You just ask for water again. Yes, hot water. It's free if you're traveling on a train, on in a car. Okay. One of my favorite are. I'm going to pull these off. What are those? These are Smart Press little pack. This is just the perfect what is pack. It? Beetroot extra energy. You don't need a lot of caffeine. Wait, you, what do you do with it? You just add water. You just, no, beetroot juice. Oh, it's juice. It's just oh, a juice. Green, green juice. juice. All of your vitamins, vitamins, all the good things. A little pineapple chia Wait. cleanse. Helps with de-bloating. So oh, you just you. put and this then, in your water bottle? Uh -huh. And then protein. Up. That's it. When you need to be satiated. Exactly. It's a perfect pack. It's I think you also pack. like really these. Good. They taste this, good, Honestly, this is one of my favorite things on the planet. Okay, let's talk, let's talk hydration. Wait, what about this? These are actually like Pretzels. Oh, I mean, and this are great for like if someone's on the plane. <laughs> yeah, like and they're hungry, you can share. You're like, hey, yeah, let's okay, share. okay. Hydration, okay. yeah. I um station. I go to the bathroom a lot of times yeah. throughout the plane <laughs> hydration station. That's what she always says on the health time. Right. We know. <gasps> I got it. Uh-huh. Okay. You nailed it. Hydration uh -huh. station. I drink uh -huh. water all day. Like yeah. on the plane. Yeah. On but the car, uh, you get things. dehydrated on plane. So you so need yes. more water than usual. And okay. Not only dehydrated on the inside, but on the outside. Okay, so what do I was do? on TikTok and I saw this girl. She did like a 12-step program for your skin, and I was like, who has the time to do that? Nobody. Right. I will be honest. I am the person who will go to sleep with her makeup on. Don't judge me. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I will. I know I knew you I were gonna say I don't no. Pick no, I said, oh, I, I don't judge you because oh, look at your beautiful skin. Thank you. Okay, Thank so you. what do you take? So what I do these? is I have, these are face mm -hmm. wipes. Great to wipe mm -hmm. your face. Mm -hmm. I love this. I love an aqua four right aqua here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lips, for nose, chaps mm -hmm. up. Yeah. I always bring these things. A face spray. This is great. Hydration face spray, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Hydration mm -hmm. station. I love mm -hmm. eye mask. Mm -hmm. So instead of 12 steps on my own time, sometimes I'll do four steps. And then okay. the last thing are my essentials. Socks. I do not like putting my own socks on the floor of a plane or a train. So I cover them with travel socks. Headphones. I always carry hot sauce in my bag swag you like Beyonce. So oh my god, you are hilarious. You are hilarious. My husband loves strawberry jam and then my favorite <laughs> thing is if you've ever been on a traveling in public and you fall asleep sitting up and you're like this. Yeah. And no one, I always travel with a little handkerchief and I go like this. So Just, I can so, so I can open my mouth open if you want. But nobody cares. I they know. Would, yes, but you're these are all brilliant. Ali Ali I'm gonna start having bone broth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I Thank love you. that you Thank always take you. my drink. I, I, I love That's your idea. That's so good. So it's good. so good. Just ahead, clear out some space in your living room because we're gonna get moving with two Start Today workouts. But first, ever wonder how you can make your favorite foods healthy? Joy Bauer will reveal her best tips right after this. Welcome back. 
Eating healthy isn't always easy, but here at Start Today, it's all about taking little baby steps. Here's today nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer with some simple ways to add a healthy spin to your favorite meals. So we're starting with the cozy, comforting yes. oh, yeah. stack oh, of pancakes. Oh. Mandatory in my house every Love weekend. It. But when you put a lot of butter and syrup on top, it's going to zap your energy and it's going to leave you feeling super lethargic. Really? The easiest way to upgrade your stack is by swapping your topping. And so oh. I am Voila. showing ah. you so the That's same fair. stack of pancakes with lots of colorful berries. So first the berries add Looks antioxidants and fiber. Right. You skip the syrup. It, it gives it yes, because what we put here is a narrated mm. squirt of whipped cream. So mm -hmm. the cool part about that is it ups the fun factor. It's mm -hmm. like no calories. Right, because it infuses a lot of air within those canisters. And so you could have a generous squirt. And I'm telling you, every single bite is a delicious it really treat. Is. I'm okay. Sure. So there's not like a That's compromise a doable, there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was breakfast. Is this lunch? This is lunch. So I'm showing the classic chicken wrap rolled in a tortilla. I do like a wrap. Instead, we have a chicken wrap rolled in lettuce Voila. leaves. Mm. And here's why this is a good one. So many people are looking to cut back on their <laughs> hey, carbs. That's not the right one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the wrap to go to waste. <laughs> that's good. Around. We don't like food waste here. <laughs> but a lot of people are looking to cut back wraps. on their carbs and lower their blood sugar. And this is one of mm. the most seamless and effective trip, tricks you could do. And really, when you think about it, it's so the good. yummy filling that, say, that is the star of the show. Yeah, and if you yes. get a crisp, yummy piece of lettuce around it, yeah. Yeah, the right so I use either apart. romaine um, lettuce leaves, like when you buy the packages of the hearts, and also you can use butter lettuce, mm -hmm. or you can use iceberg. It's like almost Boston like bib lettuce. those. Yes, mm -hmm. those great big leaves are meant for wrapping sandwiches I love it. and burgers. Okay, so I can't wait for this one. Okay, so this is the beloved chocolate fudge cake, and I was kind of ballsy to take this one on. <laughs> But I tried my best to come up with a gooey, fudgy, mouth-watering counterpart. Okay. And I am I'm presenting to try this. my two ingredient two. chocolate fudge cakes. So there's two ingredients. There's no, no oil, there's no butter, and you don't need to use the oven. No okay. oil, no butter, no oven. Now, what are so, the two ingredients? So it is Apple melted. Apple sauce and water. No, oh. no, no. Melted chocolate chips like and fudge. canned pumpkin puree. That's it. Joy, this actually is, this is, this is, this is pretty, this like pretty good. It's good. Oh, I'm so happy. I was excited for that you That was to really this. skeptical, wow. too. Wow. And, and what I love about them, they're perfect portion control perfect. treats that you can stash in your fridge. And when you're craving something super mm. rich and chocolatey and indulgent mm. without but going overboard. But even a third of this is rich enough. That enough. That gives you that. Tastes like. It's this pumpkin puree and what else? Pumpkin puree and melted chocolate chips. That's so it. I used a dark chocolate chips, but you can use semi sweet. Oh my God. That's and delicious. of course, we're putting this on today.com. This is delicious. And everybody so can get the recipe. So realistically, like cal what are we still? We're saving in all sorts of stuff, right? Fat, calories, all of it. Tons of sugar, tons of saturated fat, and tons of calories. Okay, um, super and it, rich. it really satisfies that craving. Yeah. I was and really it, skeptical about that. I thought like you should have saved it. you liked it. I do. I do. <laughs> all right, now a little snack. Okay. I thought like you should have saved that for your finale, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll go back and eat that <laughs> afterwards. So this is all about the chips and salsa. Yeah, and full okay. disclosure here, I love chips. And I joke around saying that one chip is a thousand chips because I yeah. can't stop. Yes. So I'm always looking for healthier counterparts. And we know that carrots and bell pepper sticks, mm. those are oh. obvious. What These are the underdogs. Mm. So it's jicama mm. and That's it's right. also sugar snap peas. And this is why they're try so the great. I'm good. No, just he, try he it. likes the fudge. Oh, the, the, the wrap of the fudge. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm, this it's is really good. Super joy. snappy. It has a satisfying crunch, great flavor. They're in season right now. Mm -hmm. And it comes with tons of nutrition. I'm ashamed. I don't even know what it looks like from the outside to buy it. It's like a potato it, looking thing, right? It's sort of if a potato and an apple had a baby, yeah. you would get a jicama. But it's a very low calorie root yeah. veggies that's rich in oh potassium. Great. You don't have to cook it first. It's no, good. you don't cook it. You peel the outside skin Why you and you cut it into <laughs> sticks and then you dunk away really in whatever you want. Okay. Now that we're all fueled up, let's get moving. Coming up, we've got some easy exercises you can do right at home to stay in shape all winter long. And the dance workout you don't want to miss. We'll be right back.
We're back and leveling up our winter workout routines. Fitness trainer Isaac Boots recently shared some simple exercises we can all do at home during the colder months. All right, so uh, you say home workouts are, are effective, especially during winter. We don't want to get stagnant. Uh, so what, what's a move we can do to start strengthening? These are the simplest, most effective moves, okay. right? So ultimately, you want to reach your arms out. Okay. And just find your lower belly squeezing in really tight, just circling it back. You can get so much done with this okay. easy, simple move doing at home. Now, I'm adding weight to it, right? Yeah, a you weighted, have weights all over yeah, your body. Yeah, so these are the Torch by Kilo Gear weights that adds a sensible amount of weight to the larger muscle group. Okay. So you actually end up burning 40% more calories. Kind of like you're doing which a funky is amazing. chicken. Like exactly, it. it's a funky chicken moment. Wait, well, you're what, burning what, how what many more calories? 40% more calories. Oh, wow. wow. Wearing these weights that actually amplify the simplest move ever, okay? It's amazing. Aside from this, you can add a little squat. So you're gonna go down and just squeeze your booty tight, but Ooh. go as low as you, you can. Is that why your last your name's Boots? Tight. Exactly, okay. <laughs> exactly. Now you can add a, a, a little variation. You can add a little balance moment, you know? Okay. Or if you're really feeling festive, really feeling festive, you can add a jump. Yes. I'm not that festive. Yes, exactly. So all of these, these things, really, you can do anywhere, so there's no excuse, okay. right? This next, I think, is the most important, the most comprehensive. We're gonna go down into a plank, no, okay? No. So, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go, go into watch. a plank here, right? Uh -huh. Oh boy. Al's gonna do a Liza Minnelli routine on that chair, friends. okay? Oh. So you're gonna hold right here. Now, you can either just hold here, squeezing your booty, you work every part of your entire body. You can add a shoulder tap, if you want to add a little more stability through your arms, always engaging your core, or you can add a right knee to your left elbow to really get your lower body activated, exactly, but focusing on your breath. And the thing is, there's no such thing as failure. You can simply hold your plank, mm -hmm. you can add a shoulder tap, right. you can do all the variations and you get things done, okay? I hope people are doing this at home with Let's us. Let's go, oh, baby. I hope they it's are a too. great little workout. Right? Yeah. Now, hands and knees. I know it's not often we find ourselves in this position. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> hands and knees. You're gonna lift your right leg bent, okay? You're gonna pulse back. And this is where you work dat booty, okay? Yeah, now, well. if you can't go on your knees, you can go on the chair. Yeah. <laughs> like so. Like this. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But look, you can actually add, you can hold the back of the chair or hold Al Roker. Oh. And you can touch your, your toe down, lift it. Oh, so up. I can do that from the back. Exactly. From the back of the chair. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so hold on to that. Okay. okay? You're going to go coupe, lift into attitude. Ooh. Coupe. 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 Exactly. Exactly. So you're still working your lower belly, uh -huh. right? You lift it up. Now I want you to hold it up bent. You're just going to pulse it back. Pulse hey. it back. Yes, yeah, so that's how we get that booty pop. Oh. Okay? <laughs> Very good. Yes. I don't think anybody wants this booty to pop. Give me five. <laughs> I think there are a number of Americans who would love that. Oh, we're not done yet. Kristen Sudeikis is a choreographer and founder of Forward Space, and she's going to teach us a fun dance workout. But first, we're going to warm up with a moving meditation. Okay, we all ready? Everybody yes. ready? <laughs> I've got two of the founding members from Ford Space all with me right. Rachel, hello, Keith. Hello. We've got some new teammates here. Our okay. colleagues. So this is yes. a moving meditation? We're moving meditation. Back. Okay. So there, this is a key element of Ford Space, the moving meditation. We're just going to... Okay. Warm our hands up. That like I can this. do. Right. This we so, so far, far so good. Like so that. Far, so good. Just to ground ourselves and connect to ourselves. Now release a little of the tension in the hands that you might receive from gripping the phone and all that good sure. stuff. Yeah, we know that feeling. And then just throw the arms out, out. So you're releasing the tension. Hello, ball. Hey oh, hey oh, hey oh, hey oh. This does feel nice. It does. Yeah. It does. And let the shoulders, you know, sort of shrug. Now take up lots of space. So. Feet way far apart, arms in the air, looking up, and just taking a second right there. Take a deep breath in from below the floor. Exhale down. Let's go again here. Four, three, maybe walk the feet around two. One, you can join us at home if you want. Yes. Throw the hands out again. Release some of the tension in the hands again. Good, good, I good. I hope you guys are doing this at home with us because this feels amazing. It does. Yeah, it's good. good. Yes. We're good. starting there. So one arm up, one down, and then slowly coming in towards your center. Good, and then we're gonna go to the other side, slowly coming in towards your center, and just align with yourself for a second. And then you're gonna go around your head like this, 
Or if you can't go over your head, Stop if that's not available, it. you can just go towards your chest. And you think of pulling, pulling some water Good. onto you, a release, okay. a little okay. bit of relief. Okay. And then we're going to start dancing? We're going to start dancing. Okay. I mean, you know, here we go. Okay. So, here we go. we're going to learn combo. Okay. It goes wave, wave, shoulder. Just that. Five, six, seven, and wave, wave, shoulder. Yes? Again, five, six, seven, and wave, wave. shoulder. Again, shoulder. five, shoulder. Yeah, we're just touching that shoulder. How's it going? Wave, shoulder, we're going on. <laughs> Knee, take the coat off. Oh, take the coat take off. The just coat did. Off. Is it so, take the coat wave, off. shoulder, huh? knee, then which part? Take, take the, coat the coat off. off. That's right, and wave, shoulder, knee, knee then take, take the, the coat, coat off. off. Six, seven, and wave, wave. shoulder, knee. knee, take the coat off. Five, six, seven, and wave, Shoulder, yep, yep. A knee, take the coat off. Now hug, hug, open, up, down. Again, hug, open, <laughs> up, this is therapeutic. and down, and hug. And then you start to give it a, a little sum when you get, you know. A little sum, sum? A little sum, sum. Okay, yeah. Hug, open, up, down, little faster. All right. Boom. And while you guys are doing ah, that, hey, right thank we're you just, so much. You Thanks so to welcome. our backup group. We love it. We've never had backup dancers before. Hey. And that's all for this episode of Start Today. Don't forget, scan that QR code to sign up for our newsletter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Today All Day. Sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Now everybody loves a hearty meal. But when the cooking is done, nobody loves doing dishes. So today, we're making three delicious recipes that all come together in just one pot. I'm making a one pan chicken pot pie with some of my favorite spring veggies. I'm whipping up Tuscan style tortellini soup. And I'm making my flavor-packed Thai-inspired green curry noodles. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. Growing up, it was always a treat for me and my siblings to make frozen chicken pot pies when my parents were out to dinner and we had to fend for ourselves. And today I will be making a more grown up version of this classic comfort food. This recipe has some of my favorite veggies and I know your whole family will absolutely love it. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our onion going. Look at that stunning dice. Move those onions off to the side to prep the rest of our veg. This is fennel, gorgeous, gorgeous fennel. Bulb, fronds, and the stems, okay? So I really love using fennel in honestly any kind of cooking. I promise you all of that anise flavor is going to mellow out beautifully once it hits the pan. We have these fronds here. We're gonna just give them a nice rough chop. So we've taken the stem off and then I'm going to cut it in half like so. We'll go from the top to the back like so. And then rock it through from the back to the front. Let's quickly do our celery. And the theme here is green. I don't know if you can tell. All green veggies, that's what we're working with today. Okay, finally our garlic clove. And you also don't have to worry about chopping this too fine. So let's get to sauteing. We are going to add in a nice hunk of unsalted butter. We are also going to add in some olive oil. Once it is all melted and as it starts bubbling like so, that is when we know to add in our veggies. These will all go in at the same time. These veggies are really running away from me here. <laughs> okay, 
We want these veggies to break down, to caramelize a bit, to develop their flavor. And while that is going, we are going to get to work on the rest of our veggies because believe it or not, we are adding even more vegetables to this already full vegetation experience. All right, so next up we have our kale. This is lacinato kale, also known as dinosaur kale. It is flat, it's not as crazy and curly like curly kale. And my favorite way to prepare it is I will take the bottom right where the stem is, grab either side, and then take my finger and pull that stem right through. And there you go. Okay, so while this is going, we are actually going to add even more flavor with some fresh thyme. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to bunch it on up in pieces, slice it thin, just like so. How about that? Fabulous. We're gonna get to work on our chicken. A great shortcut that I love to do is I love to use a rotisserie chicken. I am pulling off this skin just because we don't necessarily need it and we can chop this up. My siblings prefer white meat and I prefer dark meat with chicken, so it's good. We'll have a little for me and then the rest for my sibbies. <laughs> Okay, looking good. So now that our veggies are ready to rock, it is time to create what I like to call an almost roux. <laughs> so we are just going to add in this all-purpose flour, but it's really important when you add in flour to a pot pie, to anything as a thickening agent, that you take the time to cook the flour down. So we wanna just keep cooking this down for about two to three minutes. Okay, it's time to thicken this up. We're gonna start by doing one cup of the stock. We wanna make sure that all of this flour breaks down. And now what we wanna do is we wanna bring this to a simmer to continue thickening it a bit more. Next up, we are going to add in our kale to wilt it and to also thicken up our mixture a bit. And now that this looks nice and thick, we're going to add in our final ingredients, our peas, our fennel fronds, and our chopped up chicken. This is my favorite thing to do with a homemade pot pie. I love using puff pastry, store-bought. I'm taking a little bit of all-purpose flour and just giving it a nice light dusting. Open it on up. This is one sheet of puff pastry. We're gonna give this one more light dusting of flour. Take your rolling pin. The main thing here is to make sure that you roll it out so that it fits whatever pan you are working with. And we're just going to fold it, bring our pan over, lift it up, and then open it up like a book. And dress it right over the top. You cute, you gorgeous. I love ya. We wanna make sure that we have about one inch around our cast iron. And you can just trim the corners off of that pastry. I have egg wash right here. And the reason why we're popping this onto the top and brushing it over the top of our pastry is because if we don't, what's gonna happen is our pastry is gonna end up looking a little sad. So we're just taking a pastry brush and really delicately brushing that egg wash over the top and the sides of the pastry. Okay, we wanna make sure it has some ventilation. You wanna make sure that you have 
at least three, maybe four, right in the center of that pie so that steam can escape. And then my favorite little extra layer of pizzazz is to take some flaky salt and sprinkle it over the top of this pot pie. So this is going to go into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes and just check about halfway through. Oh man, our pot pie has cooled. We want it to cool for about 10 minutes after it comes out of the oven. And now there's only one thing left to do, slice it up and give it a taste. And then we're gonna give this a nice big scoop. Oh yeah. Look at that. Mmm. It is unbelievable how food can instantly transport you back to a moment. It is just bursting with spring beauty and energy. I love it. One more bite, because we deserve it. I absolutely love Italian food, just like everybody else. It's so comforting and it always tends to hit the spot. Now with minimal prep, my tortellini soup is just a thing to make at the end of a long day because it's just in one pot. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the big pot that you have in your kitchen. I'm gonna set it onto a medium high heat. Next, we're gonna move on to the sausage. This is spicy Italian sausage. I think it adds a lot of flavor. Just remove the casing from the sausage. Well, sticky little thing, isn't it? <laughs> then we're just gonna put this right into the pan right now. Squeeze that sausage right on out, right into that pot. Right now, I'm breaking up the meat, so that way it'll be dispersed. It'll cook a little bit faster. Let's move on to chop up our veggies. So I've got some onion here. We're just gonna dice this up, slice it in half. And you can do generous chunks. There we go. Moving on, we got some fresh tomatoes here. Gonna dice these up as well. And you know what? I'm thinking our sausage is about finished. Yeah, it's great. It's got a great color on there. We're gonna take a slotted spoon and we're gonna remove the sausage because we don't wanna take out the oil. We want the oil from that sausage to help out with the flavor. There we go. Now, since there's not a lot of oil left after the sausage, I am gonna add in just a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna add in my onions, I'm gonna saute those. 
you know I am a garlic lover. And if you love Italian food, you gotta be a garlic lover too. Now, I've got some carrots here. Because they're so small, I'm not gonna peel them. I'm just gonna begin to dice them up as well. But just make sure you wash your carrots. Give that a nice stir. All right. In goes the garlic. Slide that on in. Give it another stir. And we're gonna cook this for about one minute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna deglaze the bottom of this pot. We're gonna do that with some red wine because we're fancy here in the Today All Day Kitchen. So grab your favorite red wine. I'm gonna be using a blend and we're gonna add about a half a cup. There we go. And if you wanna toast yourself during this recipe, I won't judge you, that's your business. Mm -hmm. Let this simmer down. And in go the tomatoes. I'm gonna let the tomatoes rest in here with the onions and the red wine and garlic. Let that simmer for a minute. I'm gonna finish preparing the rest of our veggies. Basil. I'm gonna roll them up, stack the leaves. I'm just gonna just like this. Beautiful. That should be enough. I'm gonna reserve some too for garnish at the very end. Check back in on our tomatoes and onions and look at this. You can see how thick it is. It's kind of slushy. That's exactly the texture that we want. I think this looks good. What about y'all? Yeah, Kev, it looks real good. Okay, let's start to bring everything else together. I'm gonna add in some oregano. Adding back in the sausage as well. Give this a good stir. And then our stock, pour it in. This is some chicken stock. Another pinch of salt, some black pepper. And lastly, I'm gonna sprinkle in some basil. Boom. Do we want some heat? Yeah, Kev, we want the heat, bring the heat. All right, some red pepper, boom. I'm gonna crank up the heat so that it comes to a boil, and then as soon as it starts to boil, you're gonna to wanna to reduce the heat down to a simmer. take some kale. All I'm doing is folding the kale over and I'm gonna take out the big stem. Take it at the very top and just drag the knife along the stem. Comes right out. And then just do a chop. Get 
just like this. This is great, still simmering. Ready, in, go. The kale, beautiful. And this is some cheese fuel tortellini. I'm gonna cook this for about five minutes. You can cover and let this simmer. All right, I think this is done. I'm gonna turn off the heat of our pot and we're gonna plate this amazing one pot Tuscan tortellini soup. And this soup deserves the good bowls, okay? I'm just gonna say that, it deserves it. Get a big scoop. Oh yeah, we've got the color from the carrots, color from the kale, and color from the tomatoes. Mm, beautiful. Let's garnish. Pepper. A little bit of dried oregano, if you want some. Beautiful. Basil. There we go. And look at this. Holy smokes. Cannot wait to devour this soup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my lord. That is a delicious soup. Now, I'm not team soup only in the wintertime. I'm team soup all year long. You want to come home to a nice warm hug. This is it. from scratch might sound intimidating, but I promise it's actually pretty easy. After trying this recipe, you may never go back to that jarred stuff. I'm gonna kick things off with my curry paste. Traditionally, this is made in a mortar and pestle, but this girl is busy, so we're gonna put everything in a food processor and it comes out just great. So we're gonna first start with some coriander stems. So get those right into the food processor. Then we're gonna use one small shallot or half of this large one here. And I like to quarter it so it's easier to blend up in the food processor. So get that right in. And then we're gonna use four cloves of garlic. One Thai green chili. You could just take the stem right off like this. And you could cut this in half if you'd like so it's easier to blend. And then we're gonna use one inch piece of fresh ginger. Fresh is key. The traditional ingredient in this is usually galango, but it's not readily available, so ginger is the next best substitute. And the best way to peel ginger is using a spoon, because if you run your spoon right against the meat of the ginger, the peel comes right off. How cool is that? So pop that right in. Next, we want half a stalk of fresh lemongrass. I'm just gonna give this a rough chop. And we're gonna get that beautiful lemongrass right in. I'm using one fresh lime. Let's get that all in. So then we wanna just cut this in half. You can use your hand or a little citrus squeezer and give it a good squeeze. 
and we have a few more remaining ingredients. We want some toasted cumin seeds and some toasted coriander seeds. Then we wanna add a pinch of white pepper. This is deceiving, white pepper is quite spicy, so a pinch is more than enough. And then a pinch of kosher salt. And we're gonna whiz this up. And just keep pulsing. Okay, so I think we're good. So I'm gonna get it out into a bowl and then I'm gonna grab my veggies, tofu, and noodles for the rest of my recipe. So we've had our tofu here sitting in some paper towel. We've pressed it so you'll notice that it's a little bit drier from when you open the package. So I like small cubes because I want them to be bite-sized and able to fit on my spoon or fork. Plus, if you make them smaller, then they'll cook better and crisp up. Okay, the next step is tossing them in some cornstarch. So you just wanna lightly coat them. Great, so let's turn our skillet on. And we're gonna wanna get this to about a medium high heat. Coat the bottom with some neutral cooking oil. I'm gonna start giving them a flip. This is what you want. This is gonna be flavor packed. These are looking great. You could see the color, the crisp. So I'm gonna get them removed and then start prepping my veg. First, I'm gonna slice my onion. We're just using a medium to large yellow onion. So I'm gonna do a quick slice on each half. So our onion is done. And next we wanna do one long red chili. These actually aren't that spicy, but they're gonna add a lot of flavor and they're gonna look beautiful against the green curry. So we're just gonna give a quick slice on this, just basically thin circles. Great. And next we wanna slice a green bell pepper. This one's a big one. So cut this in half. And I just like to scoop out the center to clean it up. And then similarly, we're just going to run our knife through it like the way we did for the onion. Great. And lastly, we have some carrot. We're gonna try doing this julienne because I like it to match the onions and the peppers, okay? And now the one pan or pot magic begins. So we're gonna take the same pan that we used to crisp up our tofu in. While that's heating up, we're gonna coat it with a little bit more of that neutral oil. And now I'm gonna add in all of my veggies. Ooh, I always love that sizzle. Mm -hmm. So we wanna saute it for about five minutes or so. And to help with the process, we're gonna add in a bit of salt. The salt is gonna help release all of the moisture in the vegetables. Now that our onions are looking a little bit translucent, it's time for our curry paste. It smells so good. We're gonna let this cook down for about three to four minutes. Once you notice that the vegetables have softened and it's browning on the bottom, it's time for our liquids. So we're gonna add in about two cups of water. And some full fat coconut milk. And now is when we add our green peas. Stir this all together. And then we wanna bring this to a slow simmer. So while we wait for our curry to come to a slow simmer, I wanna talk about the noodles. So I'm actually using edamame noodles, which are noodles made out of edamame beans. They're super delicious and they're a beautiful green color. 
Okay, so our curry is simmering. So now it's time to add our noodles. You just wanna make sure all the noodles have some moisture on them. They're all covered with the liquid. Great. Then we're gonna cover it and let it cook for about five minutes. I'm gonna clean up some of these bowls and get ready to taste. Okay, so our noodles have been simmering for about five minutes, so let's give it a check. These will look so good. Notice that all the liquid has reduced, but it's still nice and saucy, and the veggies are still vibrant in color. All right, let's get it plated. So beautiful. I love the way the carrots look in this because they really add that pop of color. Okay, now for our tofu. We haven't forgotten about that. So they've actually cooled off here, which is great because now they're nice and crispy. And then we're gonna add some of our garnishes. So we have some fresh lime, some fresh coriander, and we reserved some of our fresh red chili. Look at this, can you believe this was made in only one pan? I just have to give this a taste. Are you kidding me? It's like I'm walking the streets of Bangkok. It's so vibrant, it's so fragrant. You should always eat with your eyes first. And this is certainly a dish that I'm eating with my eyes first. guys, welcome to The Boost. Let's kick things off with a little holiday cheer as we go behind the scenes with the Radio City Rockettes and two sisters who are fulfilling their dreams doing those famous high kicks side by side. For so many of the Radio City Rockettes, before they were dancing on the stage, they were watching from the audience, including Jordan and Danielle Betcher. You probably get this a lot, but are you sisters? <laughs> we, we are sisters, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Danielle, the oldest, remembers seeing the Christmas Spectacular with her grandpa when she was 13. And he must have seen that look on my face of just like pure joy because he leaned in and he goes, you know, someday you could do that if you wanted to. Ten years ago, she did. And seven years ago, her sister did. This year, for the first time, they're right next to each other on the kick line. I just know that she has my back both on and off stage. Danelle Morgan also has their backs. Old Saint Nick will ride through the sky. She's a swing, ready to step in when someone is out. It's an incredibly challenging job. We don't just learn the one track that a single rocket will do in the show. We learn the entire show. Sometimes do you only have like a moment's notice before you have to jump in? There have been times where it's mid-show and then all of a sudden we're on the stage. An 18-year rocket vet, she knows her parents could be in that audience. They pop up and they show up in the front row for a show where I'll, I'll hear my dad cheering and I'm like, oh my gosh. My parents are here. They didn't tell me they're here, but they're here, okay. So your parents don't always warn you that they're coming? Oh no, they don't always warn me. I can see my mom's glasses reflecting with the lights and it's just really special to know that there's love coming at me while I'm performing. Reminder, the Rockettes are not just in sync with each other, but with you too. Joe Fryer, NBC News, New York. Okay, Santa, we know you have your famous list, but we have one of our fave follows too. It's our fave follows list, and we are officially adding Santa J. Claus to it. Let's take a look at how he's spreading cheer on social media. You know him, you love him, it's Santa Claus. Old St. Nick, a hero to kids, has spent decades as a fixture of pop culture from parades to movies. But now, to spread the holiday spirit to yet another generation of good boys and girls, Santa has gone to TikTok with the handle Santa J. Claus. Showing off everything from his dance moves to what he does in the off season. His food reviews. Look how large that cookie is. I need this cookie. An outfit to the day. Christmas spirit activate. To his work with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Santa J. Claus carries the Christmas spirit all year round. Good morning, Baltimore. 
With more than 4.5 million followers, Santa's got a very long list to check this year. Are you on the nice list? We well, certainly are on the nice list. And with the big day approaching, he's taking a break from his busy season and getting his reindeer in formation because Santa J. Claus is coming to town to visit with us. Santa J. Hi, Santa J. Hello there, my friend. Santa J. We're so happy you're here. How did you figure TikTok out, Santa J? It took quite a while, all of the technologicals, <laughs> my friend, but we gave it a try, and it seemed to do quite well. And why did you feel like you wanted to take your Christmas magic yeah. to the talk? Well, I think that I was seeing some of the things you were seeing the young people posting. I think mm -hmm. they needed a reminder of some positivity and goodness. You know what? People are always saying that you make them feel joyful. So there's something special, because I think we all can do a little of that somehow. What's the secret to spreading joy? Well, I think for the most part, it's the opportunity to uplift those that are around you. What mm. a wonderful gift it is. Having the gift giver's heart to brighten someone's day. And I'm able to do it with a simple little video and make them smile. What a <laughs> wonderful thing. Yeah, and you also help in a lot of different ways. We talked about in the piece, you help with St. Jude's Children's Hospital, which mm -hmm. we adore. How has that been for you as mm -hmm. a helper? A wonderful opportunity to be able to be an ambassador for St. Jude. They are doing so many wonderful things. And every time I visit there, I'm always inspired by what they're doing. And it's not just that, but charities from all around the world make a wish also a wonderful thing to support. Mm -hmm. We were surprised to read, Santa Jay, that you are a trained opera singer. My goodness, well, I love to sing a little. Well, I don't know about training. Mrs. Claus has been working on this one for me. Well, you're gonna, but you are actually Performing. going to sing at the Grand Ole Opry, aren't you, on the day before Christmas Eve? I am on December 23rd. I cannot wait. A little singing on the Grand Ole Opry stage. It will be my debut in Nashville. How fun <laughs> is that? Wow. Now, you know, this is the type of year when people can get a little stressed out. Yep. Uh, maybe the opposite of carefree. Yeah. I wonder, how do you keep things balanced, Santa, during your busy time? Well, I think cookies are involved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an opportunity to be able to continue to remind yourself of the good that's around you. Sometimes we can get a little overwhelmed by the world, and taking a moment to see that there is goodness always to be found is such a wonderful thing. Uh, we have a question for you, Santa. Certainly. Jane. And we're scared uh, to ask We're it. afraid because we, maybe the answer is not yeah. great. Are we on the nice list or well, the naughty list? My friends, Hoda and Jenna, certainly on the nice list. Oh, oh, it's, good. it's definitely for you, my friends, going to be a carefree Christmas. Oh, <laughs> Santa, Santa Jane Santa, knows do you her like our song, Santa Jane? The Jay. elves cannot stop singing it in the <laughs> workshop, my friends. What a wonderful thing. Oh, and you know what? If, they, if we can keep the elves carefree, we can keep anybody yeah, carefree. Yeah, we can. Thank Sa you, Santa Thank Jay. Okay, we know that you are famous, of course, but we would like to add you to our fave follows list. Is that okay? Certainly, my friend. All okay, Santa right. Jay. We're adding it Thank to you. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, my friends. After the break, it's New York's hottest new attraction, and we were the first to try. Stay with us. Rock's newest attraction gives visitors the chance to recreate an iconic photo at the top of the rock. And Team Today was invited to be the very first guests. 
Check it out. Check it out, guys. We're going up there oh, to wow. the top of the rock. Yeah. All the way to the top. You know Woo. what's up there? What? The beam. Let's go oh. beam. Oh, we're getting on the beam. It was just a short walk across the street from Studio 1A. Wait. Yeah, let's go. Going up. To be the very first guests to beam ourselves up to the latest experience in Rockefeller Plaza. Beam. To the beam. Beam. The beam. 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 The beam refers to a steel beam that became part of one of the most iconic photographs in American history. 11 iron workers dangling more than 850 feet high above the city, casually eating lunch. The construction of Rockefeller Center is complete and John D. Rockefeller Jr. will drive the last rivet. The year was 1932, the height of the Great Depression, and this construction project, eventually known as Rockefeller Center, put more than 40,000 people to work when jobs were hard to come by. The photo, called Lunch Atop a Skyscraper, came to symbolize American resilience and an ode to the American worker. Oh, here we go! Get ready! And we were on the way to pay our own tribute of sorts to the 69th floor of 30 Rock, to that very same location the original photo was taken. This new adventure is called The Beam. Is that The Beam? This is it? That's a beautiful piece of metal right there. And soon we were strapped in. This is like being on a ride at Universal. <laughs> Hands up! Come on, let's go! Because to recreate that famous photo, Oh. We have to be lifted oh, high into the oh, air. Good. So Here we far, go. So, so good. good. And then something we don't expect. We turn. Oh, oh, okay. oh, oh yeah. How are we doing? How are we oh, doing? baby. Oh, hold it up. Carson, how are we doing? <laughs> We're doing good. SG. Oh, oh, man. Oh, wow. 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 No, 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 now no, we no, go no, out no, over no, the. No. We're not really. No, it does not. No, it doesn't. And, oh, yes. We turn again. Oh, oh no, wow. we're going back. This is oh. So great. Yeah. oh, that's great. And now we're in position to try and capture that famous moment. We felt like we were beaming, but something was missing. If those brave iron workers were having lunch, so were we. Would you want to eat lunch up here? We were going back up. So what do you guys think about this experience? Would you like to meet at this place for lunch again? Sure. <laughs> I think we should do the show from up here. I think it's a great lunch wow. spot. Mm -hmm. I think it's perfect. Carson, how are you? The view is tremendous. Mm -hmm. You all right? It makes you think about hardworking Americans back almost 100 right. years ago. Yeah. yeah. And the idea what this, build, this yeah. building is still standing. Yeah. yeah. And I got news for the people at home watching this. The beam underneath us, not that wide. No. No, it's not. Not that wide. No. 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 But this is special. Mm -hmm. Go back in time. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 again in 80 years. Cheers. There you go. During the holiday season, a lot of us look forward to time at home, and Craig's family decided to give an old family home a makeover, but not for themselves, for families in need. What makes a house a home? This small, one-level house outside Columbia, South Carolina, has been in my family for generations. It was actually built by my great-grandmother in 1950. It was also the first home my mother ever knew, staying here right after she was born. This was your first house, right? It was. This was where I came home to with my mom, who was an 18-year-old mother. My mom's family moved out, and my Aunt Margaret lived in the house for decades. For folks who don't know, what was Aunt Margaret like? Aunt Margaret was fun. She didn't have any children, so she made sure that we had stuff. Over the years, we spent many happy times here on Sundays after church or on holidays. But Aunt Margaret had a lot of health issues. After she died, we realized the house was going to be sold at a court-ordered auction to settle unpaid medical bills. We couldn't let that happen. So we bought the house as a Mother's Day gift for my mom to keep it in the family. Together, we decided it could serve a greater purpose. We decided to lease it to a nonprofit called Family Promise for 25 years for a dollar a year. Family Promise provides transitional housing to families in need. Jeffrey Armstrong is the executive director of the local chapter of Family Promise. What a gift like this does is has a ripple effect because it allows families to remain together. So you don't have the, the mother or father figuring things out while the children stay in different places. Before anyone could move into the house, it needed work, a lot of work. My family paid for the project, and dozens of local businesses and organizations helped to renovate the house. 
To say they took it down to the studs would be an understatement. Over a series of months, they redid everything. Oh my goodness, Craig. When you walked in for the first time, what'd you think? I started crying. I just, I just started crying. Cause I, mm, it's more than I could have imagined. I cried a little bit too. This is a lot of memories. Now it was time for some new families to make memories here. My mom and I were there to welcome the first to move in, Jamila Buchanan with her 15 year old son, Jukai, and five year old daughter, Jania. They moved to Columbia from Tennessee last March and had been living in shelters and in churches until they found family promise. Oh my God. Hey! 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 hey. <laughs> We took them on a tour of their new home, each child with a room of their own. Oh, look at your room, Janelle. This is so pretty. The little touches making them feel at home. A welcome change from the past few years. What's the last few years been like for, for you? What's it been like for them? My steady, you know. Um, being that I was raised like that, I think it kind of followed me throughout my adulthood, you know. Stability is important. Very. <laughs> and were you having a hard time um, finding a place to live? Yes. When we moved here, I was wanting to find a place within a couple of months, but it didn't work out that way. So that's when I called Family Promise. And they were like angels. Yes. <laughs> God sent. <laughs> Come on, princess. And the angels were with us when we all found one last surprise in back of the house, a playset with a plaque to honor my late niece, Jasmine, who died of cancer at the age of three. Ready? A reminder that nothing is more precious than family, no place more important than home. <laughs> Higher? Higher? Coming up next, we'll meet a chef on a mission, how he's helping men rebuild their lives through pizza. That story right after this. boost with the life-changing mission behind a Philadelphia pizza shop. Al got to see how they are serving up second chances. Growing up in West Philadelphia, Chef Michael Carter was always cooking alongside his grandmother. You know, he who's in the kitchen gets the taste it first. Ah. <laughs> but his plans to attend culinary school were derailed when he found himself behind bars, convicted for armed robbery and sent to a juvenile detention facility at 16 years old. You were getting in some trouble. What was what was happening? Me and my mother, we basically we weren't getting along. 
and I ended up getting kicked out. So I kind of ended up running the street. What do you remember of that time? You know, if you don't work, you don't eat. So I had to do a couple things that ended up on the other side of the law. From there, Mike spent a total of 12 years in and out of incarceration, convicted for various felonies. But he always managed to find work in the prison kitchens. Is that where you start actually developing kitchen skills? That was the first place I ever understood a culinary kitchen outside of the kitchen that I was raised in. So now I'm understanding how to do culinary math because instead of just cooking for, say, me and my siblings, now I'm cooking for everybody on grounds. And then once I was in the penitentiary, I'm cooking for 2,000 people a day. With the dream of a cooking career still burning bright, he trained in culinary management after his release in 2013. What was it about food that you realized, I can feed people and I can make money? And they say, do what you love to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I love to eat and I love to cook. It just made absolute sense. Mike working his way up in kitchens and catering companies all over Philadelphia until he was introduced to Muhammad Abdul Hadi, also formerly incarcerated and looking to open a pizza shop with a purpose. Playing pies and saving lives. Down North is a mission-based for-profit pizzeria where every single one of my guys is a father. They're all returning citizens. People often say, do your crime, do your time. And then these guys come home to no resources, no jobs available. So how are they actually going to be the men who they are? Down North Pizza is hoping to improve upon Pennsylvania's nearly 65% recidivism rate by exclusively hiring formerly incarcerated men. We big on the resources here. They have access to a lawyer. We have housing for our guys. If we can't house you, we could point you in the right direction. So we have guys that we actually have placed in kitchens throughout the city. Mike serving as both executive chef and role model of the restaurant's purpose. Myself, as well as our founder and every single employee that I have has been through it, but they didn't let that define them. They used it as either motivation or they use it as inspiration to move on to the next step in their lives. All while conjuring up school lunch, pan pizza nostalgia with each of his funky square slices. Tell me about the menu. We don't have a menu, we have a track list. It's basically the soundtrack to our youth in Philadelphia. And with the youth on his mind, Mike started a new program for inner city kids with a cooking class at the Philadelphia Juvenile Justice Services Center hoping to lay the groundwork towards a different future for the next generation. We're actually teaching these kids how to cook, getting them involved. We actually have a healing garden there too. They get to grow the food, and in my class you get to cook the food. So it's like a farm to table situation. Mm -hmm. So you're using food in a way to get them to come out of their comfort zone. Exactly, try something out of the box and that may potentially be good for you. What do you hope kids take away from your classes? I just want them to be open to a different life than they were born into. I'm hoping my class serve as a key to open up that door to actually leave your neighborhood and see what you really can become once you explore the world. As the saying goes, not all heroes wear capes. NBC's Kaylee Hardtongue met the hardworking heroes supporting the NFL's Baltimore Ravens on the sidelines, an elite group that is always ready to serve. In the city of Baltimore, these heroes are working double duty. When you guys first became firefighters, did you ever imagine the role that the Ravens could come to play in your life? No, not at no, all. Not at all. David K. Mack, Frank Thomas, and Jawan Yancey are three of 23 Baltimore firefighters who work part-time for the Ravens support team on their days off from the firehouse. How similar is the mentality that it takes to be a firefighter? What's required of this job? I think it, run, it runs hand in hand. No one's bigger than the team. It's all a group effort. So we all have to jump in there for that win, whether it be here or at the firehouse. The tradition started in 1996 when the Baltimore Ravens franchise first began. The team didn't have a huge budget to hire full-time employees. So local firefighters volunteered to help and 26 years later, they've never left. In a week, how long is the list of to-dos for you guys here? How long do we have? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Starts from 6 a.m. up to 8.30 at night some nights. 
Welcome to the heart of our fireman operations for the Ravens. That's what we do all the laundry, game days, and practices. We have some game day pants here. We go dig into, we get right to work. We got a blood stain remover. We got blood, we got grass stains. Not to mention the sweat. I'm trying not to get too close. Yeah. Whose uh, pants are these? So this is uh, Ben Cleveland. He's our one of our tackles, massive man. Ben Cleveland, you're welcome. The guys say on a white pants week, it's a seven step process to get them clean. Roquan Smith, heart and soul of the defense, and some of the dirtiest pants in this pile. <laughs> What's a tougher assignment? Putting out a fire or getting the stains out of some of those dirty uniforms? I would definitely say the stains. <laughs> On Sunday night in Los Angeles, those Ravens uniforms were looking crisp. The firefighters side by side with the players at SoFi Stadium. Wrestling the players gear on and shagging practice balls moments before kickoff. And the morning after a game, they're right back at the firehouse. By the way, that man who was helping me with the laundry, Jawan Yancey, he's chief of his firehouse. What's your favorite part? about getting to be a part of the Ravens organization. Not to sound sappy, but like these guys. It's kind of like a deep breath for us when you get to hang out with your friends and your favorite team. And Chief Yancey is one of the only Ravens staff members entrusted with this job, breaking in the footballs for the most accurate kicker in NFL history, Justin Tucker. You take the end of the brush and you want to get all the nubs off the football. Smooth it out. Yep, you want a smooth kicking surface. Lucky for you, Justin Tucker doesn't really miss. Yeah. Yeah, well, boy, I probably wouldn't have a job. You have played a very important role in that through his career. A small part. He works hard. He works hard. The Ravens players know the sacrifice these firefighters make for their city and how valuable they are to this team. Patrick Queen is one of the Ravens' fiercest linebackers. Everything they do for us is just it's so greatly appreciated. I mean, like this place really wouldn't be functioning the way it functions without them. Do you have any idea how long it takes them to get grass stains and blood stains out of your uniform after a game? I have no idea, but I'm pretty sure it's a long time. How cool is that for you guys just to be surrounded by men of this caliber? Well, one thing, if the building catch on fire, I know who to go to for one. <laughs> <laughs> so firefighters have a motto, never say no. How does that apply here? We pride ourselves on fixing the problem and helping out. Situation comes comes along, we just, you know, shift gears and go in that motion, go in that direction. And these Baltimore firefighters are always ready to serve their city, saving the day on the field and saving lives off of it. We've got another fun story coming up that is right after the break. We got some more feel good stories for you. Take a look. There's no place <laughs> like home for the holidays. And here's more proof. So, Chloe Colton had been living in Australia for a little more than a year. So, she wanted to surprise her parents because she's going to fly home for Christmas. Her brother picked her up from the airport. And here's what happened when she walked in the door. Why do you see that? <laughs> That's 
complete shock. <laughs> That's when you're not clear if it's a dream or not. Yeah. Then the tears, the tears start flowing. Chloe's parents overwhelmed. These are the memories that oh. they'll take forever. Oh, how awesome. I love that moment where yeah, it's yeah. like they saw ghosts. Yeah, that's like, exactly you right. Look like my daughter. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It is so wow. That's great. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Boost. We hope we made your day a little bit brighter, and we will see you back here tomorrow on Today All Day. Every morning, get into the holiday spirit with today. We're going to spread some holiday cheer. Some added inspiration to give back this holiday season. We are launching Day's Toy Drive. Holiday gifts for everybody on the list. That is delicious. Our biggest holiday crowd I'm yet. Three, two, one. Make today your home for the holidays. Good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Hey, buddy, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on today. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Hometown Holidays on Today All Day. As we head into the holiday season, we have gathered beloved chefs and friends of the Today Show to share their favorite festive memories and a delicious dish from their family table. All right, so we're moving the mains aside. Today, it is going to be all about the scrumptious sides. We, we traveled all across the country to visit several folks right at home. For example, we got Curtis Stone whipping up the perfect starter to celebrate an Aussie-style Christmas. Layla Ali is sharing her sweet and savory cornbread dressing. And you do not want to miss comedian Sebastian Maniscalco making a recipe inspired by his grandma. But first up, I went to visit my good friend, Chef Marcus Samuelson, at one of his Manhattan restaurants, Hav and Mar. Growing up in Sweden, Marcus learned to cook with his grandma, Helga, during the holidays, so he had plenty of delicious memories to share with us. Marcus, how are you, my, my friend? friend? How are you? Welcome oh. to Chelsea. Welcome to Havmar. Mar. Well, Marcus, you know, it's the holidays. Give me a sense of how you grew up. Well, I was born in a hut in Ethiopia. And then at a very early age, my sister and I and my birth mother, we had tuberculosis. My mom passed away, but me and my sister, we got cured. And then we got adopted to Sweden. And I went from being Kasahunse guy to Marcus Samuelson. I went from eating injera and hot stuff to herring and boiled potatoes. <laughs> so what were the holidays like for you, you know, growing up? Well, the holidays were actually my favorite time of the year because my grandmother, she was the food factory. All relatives came to Grandma Helga's house and she just produced. Early November, mm -hmm. it was like always bread to be made, saffron buns to be rolled, herring to be pickled, uh, always something, right? And as you get closer to December and mid-December, the big Swedish smorgasbord started to happen where there's like seven types of herrings, five types of salmon, <laughs> meatballs through the roof. And she made all of it. When you're an immigrant, you always have your foot in the old country, although you're not there. Mm -hmm. And we kind of do a hybrid at home now, right? With my two kids, uh, with my wife. 
There will always be some Swedish glugs. But there will be Ethiopian dishes. And plus, of course, Thanksgiving turkey. If there was only one thing that you could eat of your grandmother's, mm. what would it be? Her Swedish meatballs. What makes those Swedish meatballs stand out? For our family was a Swedish middle-class family, but our grandparents coming up were poor. And when you have a Swedish meatball, you can really feel the poverty. Because it's, you know, there's breadcrumbs in there. Why is there breadcrumbs? Because there wasn't enough meat around. Everything was about filling out right. because you didn't- Stretching it. Stretching it. That's what the Swedish meatball really represents me. So how do we get started with, with Grandma Helga's meatball? Yeah, we got beef. Uh-huh. But the second meat we're putting in is actually lamb today. Oh. Just, just because the fat content is better. And then we have breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put in some cream. You can just start, let's just start, just start massaging that, yes. Right. I'm gonna add in some salt. Okay. And then again, some spices. This is the Ethiopian spice from Barbara. Oh. Right? And a little bit of just cumin in, and just for flavor. Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of more salt. That's a touch of olive oil. All right, so a little more fat. Yes. Some nice golden brown garlic. So that that's perfect. Okay. You've done that before. Hey, hey. And here comes the meatball competition. Uh oh, meatball uh, competition. We, we, eh? And the key, I think, for meatball is that they should actually be bigger than you normally see them because. If they're too small, mm -hmm. they're gonna get dry. Look at that. Boom, a little bit bigger than a golf ball, I would say. Smaller than a baseball, but bigger than bigger than a golf ball. Right, look at that, perfect. Right. Nice and loose. So we got our meatballs. They look delicious. We're gonna take these gloves off that mm -hmm. I never get used to cooking with. We're gonna go over here. Okay. So Marcus, this is a combination. You have, have some oil and some butter. In oil it. and butter and also not too many meatballs in the pan. I Perfect. like to cook the meatballs with basically two pans. With the meatballs, we always had mash. I'm gonna put it quickly in our fancy, fancy oven here, just like that. And then we have our gravy. We have a little bit of cream. Uh -huh. I'm gonna add in, and this is kind of where my journey of the world comes in. We're gonna add in some chicken stock. Pickle juice in our Did you case, say pickle juice? Pickle juice, exactly. That's what we got. Pickle gonna juice add. is having a moment it's right now. It's having a moment. It's gonna be a hot topic on today's show. <laughs> but here's where I take sort of my inspiration for my journey on my travel, right? So I'm adding in a little bit of miso. Oh, right? wow. A little bit of mole, and then breadcrumbs. Right. And some pepitas, some pumpkin seeds. Wow. Mm. Uh, the flavors of breadcrumbs that we're having there. We're just gonna simmer this together. And then ah. we have a beautiful gravy. I think we're ready, we're almost ready to play. Let's play. Let's play. Now we just got the gravy left. Mm -hmm. And then we had those sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. And crunch. we had a little crunch, exactly. Pumpkin seeds, supposed to pumpkin yes. seeds. And just some pic pick pickled uh, yeah, onions. Just some pickled onions, you know. There would never be a Swedish meal without some pickles. Okay. All right. All right. And when, for me, I can't eat this without thinking about my whole family. Oh. Comfort, right? Grandma Helga would be yes. very proud. Isn't that good? Happy holidays. Mm -hmm. Man, those meatballs were a holiday party for your mouth. Up next. We're gonna head to Nashville, where country star and cookbook author Jesse James Decker shows us not one, but two ways to make bread more beautiful. My love for the holidays started very early because my mom was very, very festive, and I really do feel like it trickled down to me and my siblings. Every year, mom would make hot apple cider, and she'd put on Christmas music, and we would all decorate the tree. It was something really fun, and she would hand the ornaments to us one by one. Now I carry those traditions over into my family. The kids love cooking with me, especially Forrest. He's in love with cooking. He will bring me my cookbook and open it to the page. He wants to make something, and we will just, you know, go to town. It's so much fun. It's such a great thing you can do with your children. So I'm pregnant with our fourth baby, and it was such a special surprise. I love being pregnant around the holidays, especially because I can just feast a little extra more. A new holiday tradition that I have started is my cranberry pull-apart bread. 
It's so easy to do, so easy to prep, but once it's finished, I mean, it looks fancy. It's just perfect for everybody. The sweet, delicious cranberry pull apart bread was such a hit. I thought to myself, why don't we expand upon this and do a variation of it, but do a savory version. And so I started thinking of all the things Eric had in the garden. I've always got rosemary, parsley. I love garlic, always got tons of garlic. And so I just felt like, you know what? Let's see how this turns out. And it turned out just beautifully. Hey y'all, welcome to Nashville. I am so excited to share with you two of my favorite recipes. The holidays are here. And so I have the perfect two side dishes that will just warm your family's hearts. We've got a sweet and a savory. We're gonna start by cubing and cutting the bread. There you go. It's cubed to perfection. Now we're gonna grab our mixing bowl and we're gonna start combining some of our ingredients. So we're gonna take our pecans, our brown sugar, our dried cranberries, the butter. We're gonna add a little bit of this orange zest. And I just think it adds a little citrus something something. We're gonna add a little bit of juice. Now we're gonna mix the ingredients. You can use your hands, you can use your fork, whatever feels right. I think it's ready to put aside. I'm gonna wash my hands, and we're gonna get to stuffing the brie. All right, y'all, it's time to start filling the loaf. You're just gonna stuff as much as you can in between each little cube. There's gonna be a point in time where you're gonna be like, is that enough? Should I give up? But you don't. You find every single crack and crevice you can and you just keep stuffing. Ah, we did it. Now it's time to start stuffing the crumbly stuff. Just the last little bit. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cover it in mozzarella cheese. So now that the sweet version of this is finished, I'm gonna show you my savory version for those that like a little bit of a salty flavor. So we've pre-cut and cubed our bread just like I showed you before, but this time we're actually gonna start stuffing it with the brie first. All right, we're so close, last one. Now it's time to make the delicious savory herb butter. We're gonna throw in a little garlic, parsley, salt, rosemary. Now it's time to spread the herb butter onto the bread. You're gonna paint this on all over. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cover it with our mozzarella cheese. Gorgeous ready to join its sweet little friend over there. I like to cover it with tin foil because the top will get a little crisp. All right, y'all, these buns are going in the oven. They're all finished and they're absolutely ready now to garnish. And now, drum roll for my favorite part, we're gonna taste. I have to take this away, I could eat the whole thing. And you're gonna watch everyone just tear this thing apart and fight over that very last bite because it is just that delicious. I hope y'all enjoy these recipes. They are such a tradition in my home and I hope they become one for you guys as well. So y'all have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I'll see y'all soon. Stick around for more show-stopping sides. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Hometown Holidays on Today All Day. Now, Top Chef Judge Gail Simmons certainly knows a thing or two about creating an elevated culinary experience. Up next, she's sharing a twist on traditional Hanukkah latkes. And later, Chef Jordan Andino is going to whip up carrots like you have never seen before. Sharing the food that's important to me, I think, shows who I am, my heritage, my history. I think that there's like so many ways of making food as an offering of peace to the world. I grew up with food as a really huge focus in my life. My mother was actually a cooking teacher. She ran a cooking school out of our home when I was very little. We spent all our time in the kitchen with her. There's dozens of dishes that I have memories of her making when I was a child for all different occasions. You know, holidays certainly were occasions where we ate very memorable food because it was a tradition. In my house, we really celebrated Hanukkah in a big way. We play with dreidels and Hanukkah gelts. We give gifts, but small gifts. You know, Hanukkah for us was never really about gift giving. It was more about being together. And then we always have a big Hanukkah feast. Not only do we light the candles for eight nights, but we cook with oil, which is why letkas are made. It's not so much about the potato they're made with, it's more about the oil that they're fried in. Making letkas was a big deal in my house. We would walk into the house probably two weeks before Hanukkah, after school, and smell that smell. It's such, in my head, the most iconic smell of the season. Today I'm making a bit of an elevated play on a traditional Hanukkah latka. Usually you would just use potatoes and onions, but I'm gonna use parsnips, which add a mellow, delicious sweetness to them. And then I'm gonna top the latkes with some very special celebratory ingredients for an adult version. All right, I start by peeling one russet potato, and I'm gonna put it through the food processor with two shallots. When the potatoes and onions have been shredded, I'm gonna drain them in a colander over a bowl for a few minutes, and then, while these are draining, I'll shred my parsnips. If you don't have a food processor, you can absolutely just use a box grater, which is more traditionally how lekkas would have been made. And then I'm gonna mix the potatoes and the parsnips all together. Give that a stir. And then I'm gonna add my binding agents, my egg, my flour, a little baking powder and salt. While I'm mixing all my ingredients together, I'm also heating my oil. I have about a quarter inch of vegetable oil in a heavy bottom pan on my stovetop, and I'm gonna let it come up to heat. Now it's time to make the lekkas. I want them to be light and fluffy, so I'm using a big tablespoon, and I like to keep it flattened on the spoon. I can also do a little squish here to squish out any excess liquid, and then I'm just going to slide it right into my pan. And you can flatten it down a bit too. You want the oil to come up kind of half to three quarters of the way around the latka so you can see that it's bubbling and starting to cook. You know they're ready when they start to get really nice and golden brown around the edges and you can give each one a flip and there you go. You can see that it's perfectly cooked and golden. It takes about three to four minutes per side, so about seven minutes total for each latka. You can see how evenly it's cooked on both sides go right on a paper towel lined plate. And then you just want to sprinkle them with a little bit of salt while they're still warm. You could eat these just as they are and they would be fantastic. But if I'm having a holiday party, I like to dress them up a little bit, give them a bit of an adult spin. So I have a few of my favorite celebratory ingredients here. Creme fraiche, and I'm gonna just take a little bit. You can obviously use sour cream. Give it a little swirl. It's really rich and delicious, especially on a wet cup. And then I have a few different types of smoked fish. I have smoked trout and I have smoked salmon. And I'm gonna do a few. And then I'm gonna put on some trout roe and some herbs. This is actually fennel fronds the tops of a fennel bulb. You can also use dill, any really tender herb. And here you go, perfect celebratory holiday appetizer or side dish, my parsnip and potato latkes with smoked fish and trout roe. A perfectly fried latka at Hanukkah is exactly what I crave. To me, there is nothing more delicious that represents my heritage than this. Wishing you a safe, peaceful, and festive holiday season. Cheers, everyone.
I would say that because of the style of household that I grew up in, we'll call it traditional Asian, <laughs> I would say food is the love language. My skills in cooking came from two people, my grandmother, or Lola, as we like to call it in Tagalog, in the Filipino national language, and then my dad. I just loved cooking with them. It was a way for us to bond, and I could see that they loved me if they didn't necessarily say it as often as I'd like. Food is the central focus of our, our holiday parties. Yes, we're gathering to spend time with people who we love and adore, but it was always centered around food every single time. This is the first holiday season where I get to spend with my little baby girl. And wow, I, 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 I get emotional even just thinking about her because I didn't know that you could love someone, something, the way I, I feel about this little girl. And I can't wait to instill all these traditions that I've been practicing for 35 years onto her. Since I grew up and have my own family, I do Friendsgivings. And that's my way of bringing the tradition of my family back to the, my network and people who I know and love now. They always ask me, like, can I bring anything? I'm like, no, don't bring anything, I'll do it all. That's how I show my love. I show my love through food. I like when people come to my Thanksgiving dinners or my holiday dinners and they go, you've ruined dinner parties for me. Because the food is so good, the atmosphere is so good, the vibe is so good. And I'm like, mission accomplished. Let's go, baby. <laughs> so what I'm cooking today is a charred maple glazed carrot. And it's actually a riff of what I used to make with my dad and my grandmother growing up. They'd always take root vegetables, mix it with oil, um, sh brown sugar, maple syrup, salt, pepper, get, give you like a nice char. And that flavor has always stuck with me. All right, everyone, I am in the Carriage House kitchen, and right now I'm gonna show you how to make the maple charred heirloom carrot dish. So I have my heirloom carrots here. I remove the tops, and what you're gonna do is just get, cut them on a diagonal bias to help with the roasting process, cooking time, and we're gonna throw them into a mixing bowl, and I love using these style of carrots, specifically the heirloom carrots. It gives you different dynamics of presentation, and of course, color, and also flavor. So once you have your little mix posted up in here, you're gonna take your vinaigrette, which is a maple syrup vinaigrette, has a little bit of other spices and oil in there, a little bit of salt and pepper. And once it's done, you're gonna throw that right onto your roasting pan, and then that eventually is gonna go into the oven. But while that happens, we're gonna use this mandolin here to get our heirloom carrots ribbons so that it'll be a nice, beautiful garnish that also mimics the base of flavor from the dish. So here's your carrots. You're gonna put them in the oven, roast them until they're charred and black. High temperature, about 10 to 15 minutes at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so next step, we're gonna take all of these delicious cheeses and make our feta whipped mousse. We're gonna take some feta cheese, mascarpone cheese, and then you're gonna take some smooth ricotta and put that in as well. Super easy. You're gonna blend that until smooth and combined. All right, this is done. We're gonna put this off to the side and now we'll start making the carrot top pesto. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these carrot tops that we reserved from the beginning of the preparation of this dish. I'm gonna put that in a blender and then we're gonna combine it with salt, pepper, and a little bit of olive oil. And the beauty about this garnish is that it's delicious, it's herbaceous, and it also gives you that kind of earthy, greener flavor of carrot on top of the roasted carrot, so it reinforces it and layers that flavor. And we're just gonna blend it until smooth. Time to get it done. Charred carrots, put that in to the same vinaigrette they were roasted in to compound that flavor a little bit. Next, we're gonna do a little salt, a little bit of pepper. So now this is ready to rock. So once they're on the plate, you can then give it a little bit of a light garnish here. Next, we're gonna take the mousse that we made, we put in a piping bag, and we're just gonna give it a little bit of dollops all around. Then we're gonna give it a little bit of that carrot top pesto, and just sprinkled all around. And last but not least, carrot tops as the garnish. This dish to me just represents togetherness. It represents my Friendsgivings and feeding all the people that I love and care about. So this right here is really my heart, my home, my heritage shared with you and shared with all my friends.
Welcome back to Hometown Holidays. Up next, we're going to head to Atlanta, where boxing champ Layla Ali is making a dish that's sure to be a real knockout on your holiday table. People often ask me what my childhood was like, um, being that my father was a global icon and we couldn't go anywhere without him being recognized. You can imagine it was pretty interesting, but I just remember having a lot of love in our family. We had this huge dining room table, so you can imagine the spread that would be on that table for the holiday seasons. We would have family and friends over and there would be so much food on that table. And then as I grew older, I started teaching myself how to cook when I was about eight or nine years old. When I decided to become a boxer and said, what is it going to take to be a world champion? That's when I first learned about how important the food that I ate was. It's nice to be able to prepare meals for my kids now, and we're still eating some of the foods that I grew up on, right? My son loves mac and cheese, and then my daughter is always looking forward to her pot of greens, and really seeing them devour it and love it, you know, that's really what just warms my heart. Dressing is one of those dishes that I grew up eating many different versions of. It's not that hard to make. You can make it on a, on a regular basis, but it's just not special if you do that. It's just one of those things. You just want it for the holidays. It is just so delicious, and I actually want some right now. <laughs> Welcome to my kitchen. I'm so excited to have you here, and I'm going to show you how I make my favorite holiday side, which is my sweet and savory cornbread dressing. The first thing I'm going to do is chop up these veggies. I'm going to start with some celery. Now I'm going to chop up this green onion. It really is a preference on how much you want to use, but I like a lot of onion. This is a sweet onion. There are so many different types of onions that you can use. I definitely like to use at least two types of onion. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working on my herbs. And I actually have some fresh herbs from my garden, which I'm really excited about because they smell so fragrant right now and they're not even cooking yet. One of the herbs that I absolutely cannot make this dish without is sage. Sage is just so earthy. And I also have some fresh rosemary. It smells so good. Now we're gonna go ahead and prepare this thyme. On some of these woodier stems, I make sure to pull the leaves off. Okay, so we have our veggies chopped up, we have our herbs prepared, and now we're ready to get cooking. All right, I'm gonna start by heating up some olive oil in this pan. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the veggies. And we're gonna cook these for about five to seven minutes until they really start to sweat and cook down. Okay, so the veggies are looking nice and soft, so now you know it's time to add the turkey. So I'm using ground turkey. It's about two pounds, but it really adds a lot of nice flavor, especially if you use turkey with fat. You don't want to get the lean turkey. Now I'm going to add some garlic powder, onion powder, seasoning salt, a little cayenne pepper for a nice little kick, and I'm going to also use some coconut aminos not only for the health benefit, but also the flavor. It adds a nice sweetness. So you definitely want to break up this turkey while it's cooking. Get everything mixed in together. Okay, so the turkey's almost done cooking, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my fresh herbs. This adds so much flavor. All right, this is looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off. While this is cooling down, I'm going to prep my cornbread and get my other ingredients ready. So I like to use sweet cornbread because that is what's going to give us the balance of sweet and savory. So you've got the sweet cornbread, you've got the savory turkey and veggie mixture. Then we're going to add the egg and the chicken stock. And this is going to hydrate the cornbread. So as I'm mixing, the cornbread is breaking down even further and that's okay. We're not going to have big chunks here. And it's going to be nice and moist but not runny. So this is nice and mixed up, and now I'm going to put it in my baking dish. Now you probably need about a nine by 13. I'm using a round dish. You wanna make sure it's not too deep because you wanna make, you want it to cook. You don't want it too deep where it's gonna be soggy in the middle. I'm gonna cover this with foil and bake it for about 35 minutes. All right, I cannot wait to taste this. 
top is nicely brown the way that I like it. Look at that texture. Mm. Mm. That is so delicious. You know what, I really hope that you try my recipe this holiday season because I guarantee that your family is gonna love it. Hope you're gonna stick around because we're gonna be right back. Welcome back to Hometown Holidays. Now, if these dishes are making your mouth water, well, all you have to do is scan the QR code right here for all of these delicious recipes. Up next, we've got a little flavor from down under for you, mate. Chef Curtis Stone is whipping up one of his favorite salads fit for an Aussie-style Christmas. To me, the holidays are all about family. You know, I've got young kids and they just have such a great time around the holidays and it makes you be a big kid with them. Aussie Christmases are totally different because it's the middle of our summer. So, you know, on Christmas day, you might go for a surf before uh, sitting down to have um, your Christmas lunch. And of course, for the holidays, we're cooking on the barbie back in Australia, for sure. Whether it's throwing some beautiful fresh seafood on there, um, we, we normally start with some prawns or shrimp Christmas morning. Of course, the most traditional dessert to have around the holidays is pavlova. And a pavlova, of course, is a beautiful big meringue, fresh cream, beautiful fruit over the top of it. Um, it's a really light, summery kind of a dessert, but I kind of like serving it no matter what the weather. My boys love being in the kitchen with me, especially on Christmas morning. It's a great time when you can pull them away from their presents for a minute. I normally give them one dish each that they're responsible for, and then they get to say, this is mine and this is how I made it, and they get to tell the whole table about it, and they're pretty proud of that. For my holidays, my mum always cooks roast pork and she's so good at it. She gets that skin super crispy. We call it the cracklings and everyone fights over those cracklings. Um, gravy, of course, stuffing is, is absolutely on there. And then all the traditional sides, but a couple of fresh salads thrown in as well. I'm sure you've already guessed, but I'm an Aussie, and in Australia, of course, our holiday season is the middle of our summer. So we tend to serve lots of salads with the roast turkey and the roast pork and the roast beef. Um, and I think it is a really nice combination because you want something kind of light and crunchy to go with those rich roasted meats. So I'm going to show you a shaved Brussels sprout salad. All right, the first thing you do is you cook the quinoa and then you let it dry. Now we're going to make it crisp. So you get yourself a nice hot pan and pour a little oil. You take the quinoa and you just dump it in. You'll hear a little sizzle and you give the pan a little shake. And then for the next five or six minutes, you're gonna keep your eye on it and it's gonna sort of puff ever so slightly. While we wait for that to happen, let's make the dressing. So you want yourself a blender, right? I've got some tarragon, a little parsley and some fresh basil. So herbs, pistachios, 
garlic, a little mustard. The mustard gives it a really nice kind of a kick. I'm using white wine vinegar, but the truth is any kind of acid. Turn it on and just start it on a low speed. You can always crank it up and then you emulsify the oil. And you've got this beautiful dressing. I know what you're thinking. People have different feelings about Brussels sprouts, right? Now, usually the people that don't like Brussels sprouts used to have them overcooked and the whole house would smell like a sprout and they kind of get that weird smell that none of us like. Um, but if you eat them raw, you take a lot of that away. So this is a really different way of doing it. Now, in slicing these thin, I call them shaved, you can do two things. You can either cut them in half like this and using a sharp knife, you can kind of go through each sprout and you can slice it really, really thinly, right? And that's what we're looking for, a really fine shaved um, sprout. Here's what I do. I get myself a mandolin. Um, lots of people have these. I love mine because it comes with a cut-proof glove. <laughs> uh, and if you want to get them really fine, here's another great little trick. Just cut the Brussels sprout straight down the middle. This will allow you to shave them really fine. You're gonna mix those into a bowl. Then what you do is you take your dressing and you spoon this straight over quite liberally. Give that a little toss. Little individual plates like that. I actually take a good old scoop and this sort of becomes the center of our plate. Gorgeous. Then get yourself a couple of these pre-blanched pieces of broccoli. So we've just dropped them in some boiling water. Make sure the water's salted and you cook them for just a couple of minutes. I've got a few green beans as well. So I take a whole half avocado for each salad. You drop that in the center. Now for that beautiful crunchy quinoa and be really generous with it. I go all the way around. Then I take my dressing and I drizzle it all the way around the outside of the plate. But I give myself a little reservoir so when you actually cut into this avocado, you're gonna get this little explosion of that dressing. All right, that looks sensational. The last thing that you do is you pick up some of those finely chopped pistachios all over your gorgeous salad. I tell you what, it is a beautiful green salad. There is so much to love. There's lots of crunch in there. Beautiful with roasted meats. And just personally, it just takes me back to Australia for the festive season. Enjoy. One of the things that makes the holiday season, Christmas time, really special for me is that it's an opportunity to really celebrate the Puerto Rican traditions. And it's one of the times when I can feel most connected to my culture. Every winter, we kick off the holiday season by celebrating Thanksgiving with all my family and friends. And then we have Christmas, which for Puerto Ricans, we celebrate Noche Buena, which is actually the night before Christmas. Growing up, my mom always took charge in the kitchen around the holidays, although when I hit about junior high school, high school, that's when I joined in, because I always loved cooking. It's really fun to kind of continue those traditions and to cook these recipes that not only have been made in my family for years, but in generations of Puerto Rican families. The sonas are perfect for the holidays because they're meant to be shared. They're crispy, they're salty, the perfect kind of thing to snack on when you're sitting around talking and sharing, which is really what my favorite part of the holiday season is. While the sonas are perfect with just a sprinkle of salt, they're even better with a couple zesty dipping sauces. So let's whip those up first. First up is mayo ketchup. So first here, we've got some mayonnaise in a bowl, and then we're just gonna add some ketchup to it, fresh lime. And then of course, it would not be a Puerto Rican recipe without a lot of garlic. All right, this looks perfect. I'm gonna set it aside for now and let it hang out. Now we're gonna make a garlic citrus mojo. We're gonna start off by mashing some garlic. So I'm gonna add a little salt here and this just creates some friction. And then we add our garlic cloves a few at a time. And then we just mash. You really kind of want this to be a nice sort of a coarse paste, something that looks like this. And now we're gonna add a lot more fun flavor. Some dried oregano and some cumin. I'm gonna mix that in. We're also gonna be using our citrus juice. So whisk that all together, and then we're gonna add our olive oil. And we're gonna finish this off with a little bit of freshly cracked black pepper. 
All right. This looks amazing and ugh, smells even better. Dreamy. All right, we're gonna set this aside. I'm gonna just clear up here a little bit and then it's time to make tostones. Tostones use green plantains. I love plantains. They're sort of a starchier version of bananas. To cut plantains, you wanna start off by trimming the ends. The best way to take it off is to kind of run the edge of your knife along the peel, just to kind of loosen it up. And then you sort of stick your finger in there and just sort of force it off. Once you get in, then it comes off pretty easily. And then you just keep repeating. So sonas are fried twice. For that first fry, we wanna cut these into about two inch pieces. So we've got our oil up to 325 degrees and we're just gonna drop them in gently, just like this. And you wanna see those bubbles start to form. Gorgeous. We're gonna let them go for about two or three minutes. You really just want them to get a little bit darker, like a golden yellow. All right, these look ready to come out. And I just like to drain these on like a paper towel lined baking sheet or plate even. That's what my mom would do. See how they have that slightly darker golden color? That's exactly what you're looking for. And then we repeat with the rest of the batch. And now it's time to smash these plantains. So, a little parchment paper, a little plantain in the middle. Kind of put it in the center there. Smash it. Just a little twist is all you need. And voila! A perfectly smashed plantain. Perfect. All right, that's our last one. Now these are ready to go back into the hot oil for that second fry. The smell of the plantain frying in the hot oil just reminds me of my mother's kitchen. I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. Oh, these look amazing. They smell so good. As soon as you take them out, you wanna hit them with a little bit of salt while they're still hot so that the salt can stick to the tostones. Perfect. Now I'm gonna repeat the rest of the batch. These are perfect. They are golden, they're crispy, they're hot. I'm so ready to dive in, but first I gotta go grab those sauces. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of each of these sauces into these cute little serving bowls. This is just one of my most favorite things. You've got the salty, crispy tostón and our fantastic dipping sauces. Mm. I hope you give this recipe a try and find out why I love tostones so much. Feliz Navidad! Coming up. Make some room at the table. Tiffany Thiessen is whipping up a boozy cranberry sauce, plus a spiked surprise. Then later, comedian Sebastian Maniscalco makes a family favorite that is no joke.
Welcome back to Hometown Holiday. Now, what would a true holiday feast be without cranberry sauce? Well, up next, Tiffany Thiessen is putting a boozy twist on this popular staple. I love many things about the holidays. I love the more kind of relaxed feel that everybody has. Usually most people are more joyous that time of year. I love that my kids are usually off from school and I get to spend more time with them, more quality time at home, and it really becomes more family time. So ever since I was a little girl, I used to always want to be in the kitchen with all the women in my family, because that's where they were. Every single one of them, my mother, my grandmother, my aunt. And I have very early visions of myself peering around the kitchen door, wanting to be in there with them, doing all the fun cooking that they do. There's many times where I love to do throw a, a really good potluck party, like an old school potluck party, which is really fun, because I like when people bring some of their favorite recipes. I definitely believe you shouldn't be one to do it all. Like, I believe you're gonna give yourself a headache. It's stressful. The cleanup's a nightmare. <laughs> you need to delegate. And my mom taught me that. Delegate and you're gonna enjoy it better. I grew up in a family, a very modest family, that um, my mom really was kind of the queen of leftovers. My new cookbook, Here We Go Again, is all about leftovers. She was really the one who inspired this book. So, you know, I really learned the value of food and also really wanting to teach my children now the importance of food waste. It's really perfect for the holidays because I feel like we all have holiday leftovers. So this actual recipe um, comes from taking the cranberry sauce that most people always have leftover cranberry sauce and doing a really fun cocktail out of it. I, of course, am a homemade cranberry sauce girl. It's funny, my husband, Texas boy, grew up with the old school canned, you know, sliced cranberry sauce. I did not grow up that way. I grew up with homemade, and it's kind of just something that I absolutely love. I'm gonna show you today how I make one of my classic dishes, the blood orange cranberry sauce that I always have on my table. But I'm also gonna show you what you can do with leftover cranberry sauce, and I'm gonna show you how to make it into a cocktail. So first, we're actually gonna take blood orange soda. Now, if you can't find blood orange, you of course can do regular orange. And we're gonna actually put this on the stove top and get it simmering. And what's nice about this is the color. And of course, color means a lot during the holidays. Now we're gonna take our dried oranges and we're gonna chop these up. And it's gonna get the moisture from the soda and all the other liquid is gonna actually get them all soft again once you put them in with the cranberries. So once you have your orange soda starting to simmer, you're gonna take your oranges, you're gonna take your cranberries whole, and you're gonna take your sugar, and you're gonna add it all the way over here. So we're gonna take our oranges, cranberries, sugar, mix this all up, and already it's smelling so good. Then we're gonna take our pomegranate molasses, and then we're gonna take our liqueur, and this is just two tablespoons. And what I love about them too is it really gives that gorgeous kind of like dark color that you want for your cranberry sauce. Let's not forget to pinch of salt. We're gonna let that sit and do its thing for about 10 minutes until all the cranberries really break down and get really super soft. The holidays always means that I break out my special silver that came from my dad's side of the family. Oh, it smells like the holidays already. Uh, cranberry sauce is one of those staples on every holiday table. I love it on, of course, my turkey or any sort of protein that you have for your holidays. So this will go, of course, right to the holiday table, nice and warm. Of course, you always have leftover cranberry sauce, so I'm gonna show you what to do with your leftover cranberry sauce. We're gonna make a really special cranberry sauce cocktail. All right, so we've got our little shaker with ice already because you want your cocktail chilled. We've got our bourbon. Of course, you could use whiskey, any sort of whiskey you want, or even tequila could work in this. But I like the smokiness of the bourbon. Then we've got orange juice. Again, really nice, complements the cranberry juice, the citrus. And then we're gonna take our cranberry sauce. And yep, we're adding it right to it. All right, we do a little shaky shake. I love this uh, the shaker because I've had it for almost, gosh, I wanna say like 30 years. A lot of memories have come from this shaker and a lot of forgotten memories that I wanted to forget from the shaker. <laughs> and then you pour this over a nice size ice cube. Look how pretty that color is. Cheers. Happy holidays from my family to yours.
Yeah, it's gonna be a good holiday. Now don't forget, if you wanna make any of these recipes at home, just scan this QR code below. Coming up after the break, we're gonna visit comedian Sebastian Maniscalco and his family for a truly tasty Italian classic. Welcome back to Hometown Holidays. Our last guest loves a great meal almost as much as he loves making folks laugh. Comedian, actor, and podcast host Sebastian Maniscalco is joined by his longtime friend, whipping up a beloved family staple. I find a lot of comedy happens around the holidays at the table with family, and my family's been very, very accepting of me kind of poking fun at them. We celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas. We honor the traditions of Lana's family and my family. The kids love Hanukkah. They're lighting the candles. They're saying the prayers. And they also love Christmas uh, with the Christmas tree. During the holidays, if you go on social media, you'll start seeing families dress alike. And I used to look at that and go, look at this. Could you believe that these people are doing this? Well, now I'm in matching pajamas with my wife and kids. Now, I actually look forward to what kind of pajamas I'll be wearing <laughs> Christmas morning. Sad, sad. Food really in our family has been a tradition of getting around the table, talking to one another, making each other laugh. Every Sunday we used to go visit my grandmother and it would be part of the quote unquote Sunday supper menu. There'd be pasta, there'd be eggplant. So over the years, I became very fond of her eggplant. Now, she had passed away. That recipe kind of passed away with her. And I came across this eggplant that Dom makes. I'll never tell him this, that it's better than maybe my grandmother's, but, uh, but it's pretty damn good. We are here at my home in Los Angeles with Chef Dominic Di Bartolomeo. And today, we're gonna make some eggplant. So take us through the process here. Sure. Now. So I think the first thing we're gonna do, and you know, a lot of people make eggplant parm with the skin. For me, I like to do it without the skin. We're gonna take off the head, we're gonna take off the tail, and then from here, we're just gonna peel it. Do you reuse? the skins for anything. So Because I know we got people out you, there going, oh my God, he's, he's throwing, throwing out the away. thing. He could use that too. So you could use this if you were gonna make like a caponata or something like that, you absolutely could reuse it. Okay, cool. But today, we're throwing it out. <laughs> Next up, guys, we're gonna take our eggplant and we're gonna slice it on the mandolin. The key here is to get it nice and thin because that's what's gonna make the great texture of the eggplant. 
So we have our slices of eggplant here. There's a lot of different ways to bread these. We're gonna take it from the beaten egg into the breadcrumb, and then we're gonna lay it out nicely on our platter. Okay. The breadcrumb is store-bought, right? So look, I mean- Sit down. Just answer the question. <laughs> yes, the breadcrumb <laughs> is store-bought, okay. and there's nothing wrong with store-bought seasoned breadcrumbs. My grandmother uh -huh. made her own breadcrumb. Yeah, so- That's why I asked. Yeah. And you know, so, that's the problem with this generation, right? <laughs> so, Dom, I think we got enough slices to get this thing going. Well, let's do it. It's starting to bubble a little bit. You want to throw a piece in there? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice, look at this. So, two to three minutes on each side, we'll get a nice golden crisp, and then we'll lay it back into the pan, and we'll do our next round. Okay. Okay, now that we have the eggplant ready, it's time to layer it in the dish. All right. Let's start with a little bit of marinara sauce. And by the way, this is a very simple marinara sauce. It, the way you're saying marinara is uh, bothering. <laughs> so now, take the eggplant and literally, it's almost like you're making lasagna. You're just gonna just keep layering it so that they're touching, but they're not overlapping. So now another layer of sauce. Perfect. We're gonna take shredded mozzarella. Now grab a little bit of the Parmigiano Reggiano and just sprinkle it over just the way you did the mozzarella. And we'll just keep doing this all the way to the top. This is our last layer. You want to add a little bit more extra cheese, a little more extra mozzarella, a little more extra Reggiano. Okay. Okay. That's beautiful. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to cover it. We're going to throw it in the oven at 350 for, for about 45 minutes covered, right? Mm-hmm. And then from there, after about 45 minutes, we'll uncover it and let it crisp up until golden brown, which should be about another 15 minutes. Okay. Golden brown, bro. Look at that. Oh, perfect. So I got my wife and my father here. They're going to taste test this. Their palate's unbelievable. My father has no filter, so if he tells you, it's going to be his honest opinion. So we'll awesome. take the plates. There Let's you go. go. This is the, uh, the eggplant. All right, guys, dig in. All right, let's do this. Wow. Delicious, bro. Very this good, Dan. This is so good. It's very so, good. So, so, so good. Put it close to my mom. That plant tastes you. very, very good. I felt like over the years, Dom has become your second son. I love Dom's food. I really do. And um, I believe it is my second son that I never had. Yep. Well, if I could just say, Dad, thank you. <laughs> Get with your family this holiday, share stories, create memories, create traditions, and do yourself a favor. Do something nice for somebody over the holidays. With all that's going on in the world, all that matters to me is family. God, jeez, is that great. No? <laughs> Why am I not getting an applause? <laughs> Well, there's certainly no doubt that family and friends truly makes each of our holiday meals just so incredibly special. From all of us at Today, wishing you a delicious